We welcome you to the high country of Boone, North Carolina. Kid Brewer Stadium, the site of today's Sun Belt matchup between the hosting Mountaineers of Appalachian State and the Panthers of Georgia State. I'm Darren Vaught. I'm joined by Stan the Man Looter. And Stan, uh, I, I think if you subscribe to the notion of a trap game, this serves as that 100% for Appalachian State, does it not? Well, it could if you're a fan. But if you're a player and a coach at Appalachian State, the only game they've got to concern themselves with is a very, very good Georgia State football team. Worry about the game today. Only talk about the game today. You look ahead tomorrow. That's what they've got to do. Because Georgia State's very good. Look at their offensive numbers. They certainly are. They can fill up the stat sheet in a hurry. That does include the shutout loss to Coastal Carolina App State's opponent next week. But on paper, this looks like a pretty good matchup. It's a very good matchup because you've got teams that love to run the football ball and a very aggressive on defense and they've got solid special teams offense defense special teams coaches know each other that's what football is all about so it's a good matchup on paper we'll see how it pans out on the field on the other side as we're just moments away from kickoff here at kid brewer stadium in boone on espn plus back with you at appalachian state getting set for kickoff as they host the Panthers of Georgia State. Marshall Lewis, our referee, as he indicated earlier, it will be received the opening kick by Georgia State. And Stan, a couple of coaches who know each other really well, former teammates here in Boone at Appalachian State. Sean Elliott for Georgia State, now in his fifth season as their head coach, an offensive guy, once at South Carolina under Steve Spurrier, actually taking over at one point as interim head coach of the Gamecocks, and then Sean Clark for Appalachian State, replacing the exiting Scott Satterfield, who headed over to the ACC to coach at Louisville. This is a matchup, these two programs facing each other for the seventh time, and it's gone the Mountaineers' way every time thus far. 6-0 and the all-time series for Appalachian State as they look to Kick it off, Riker Casey to send it away for Appalachian State. Fans inside Kid Brewer Stadium today, 2,100 roughly. You know, and, and they're not only are the teams excited to play, the fans are excited not only to see football, but to be inside the rock. And we'll talk more about some of the great things that are going on at this stadium and at this complex later on in the afternoon. But it's a perfect Saturday for football. That it is. Quavian White and Destin Coates back to receive the kick and caught and will be a touchback for Georgia start to get things started as Quavian White holds on to it back into the end zone. And we've talked about both of these offenses really productive so far. We'll see what Georgia State comes out with. Cornelius Brown, the fourth, the sophomore quarterback. They call him quad, reigning Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Week. Leads the way and is back in the shotgun. One of the special sets you're going to see out of uh, uh, Georgia State. Fakes the handoff, takes off it with it himself and nearly broke a big play. Instead, is held up by the App State defense. One of the things you have to wonder, watch when you play Georgia State, different special plays. This time they're going three wides to both sides. Some of the Stop up the middle for the Mountaineers defense after the first down run right out of the gate by Brown. Watching this Georgia State team play the last couple of weeks, they started one game with uh, four wide receivers to one side for four different plays. Another time they came with a trick set. They'll give you a lot of things to get you off balance and want to get the field open. Hands off, another one up the middle, and a huge stop for Appalachian State, led by the safety Ryan Huff on the front end of that play. Ryan Huff has been playing some solid football this year, and the entire linebacking core of the Appalachian State Mountaineers has done that. Keep this in mind when you're watching Georgia State. They average about 36 points a ball game. They're sitting a third down situation, 41% on third down so far this year. Defensively, Appalachian, one of the better teams, are not allowing third downs at only 38%. Let's see what happens here. Brown receives the shotgun all alone in the backfield. 
Fires in a pass. It's received right toward midfield. They got the first against for both teams, especially for Georgia State. They use Roger Carter a lot. The second leading receiver on this team finds open areas. Keep an eye on him as this game goes on. Now accompanied again by a back in the backfield. The pitch over to Coates, and he's brought down near the sideline after a small game. How many times can Destin Coates get the football? How many different ways? Brown to receive the shotgun snap again. Man in motion as he hands off, fakes the handoff to Coates, and instead gives it away to Dixon, who fumbled it, and it goes out of bounds. Recognizing having eye discipline is going to be very important. Watch Ryan Huff come up, make the hit. The ball comes out at the last of the play. Very fortunate play for Georgia State. You're able to keep it, but now you're setting another third down. And one of the things that Georgia State has to be able to do, convert on third down and get some offensive rhythm. They're already running a lot of plays. Here comes pressure. Two for two on third down conversions this series. Now what's the matchup you want to look for? Holly, one-on-one -on -one against McCoy at the bottom of your screen. Brown looking that way, launches it forward, and he comes up and gets it, does McCoy, and just barely gets the first down, it looks like. It'll be close based on where they're putting the marker, and it is called, in fact, a first down. Yeah, Sean Jolly is one of the best defensive backs in the country, already with five pass breaks up. Gave a lot of cushion that time. Didn't want to get beat deep. McCoy does a good job coming back, getting enough for the first. Brown quickly goes to the right, pitches to Coates, who's pegged in the backfield, and comes down just inside the 20-yard line. It'll go to second down. And you mentioned Jolly for Appalachian State. Opposite him, Shamar Jean Charles is the one who's really broken out this year. Jolly well, had the tr tremendous season a year ago. He did, but but together, and they what they do is they make the mistake and they try to throw against Jean Charles and don't realize he's probably a better corner in some situations than Jolly. Both of those guys are dangerous. They're going to be tested this afternoon. Brown fakes it to Coates. Again, another open man in space and overthrows him nearly. Picking it off is Caden Smith back toward the end zone. Fortunate on both sides. Carter is, is bumped as he's into the route, so he loses his balance. This ball just a little bit overthrown, but not quick enough to be able to make the play. And again, the pressure, the decision making. Caden Smith nearly got an interception. Third down long. If you're Appalachian State, you've got to play solid defense, but you have to worry about Brown running the ball. Brown receives the snap. Flushed out. Off balance, sends it to the back of the end zone, and that is a touchdown received by Sam Pinckney. Well, we just talked about it. You have to be concerned with Brown being able to break a play. He's got a strong arm, and all Pinckney does is just kind of run and just keep running. You're concerned about trying to make a tackle. You can't make the tackle. You forget about him. He's in the corner of the end zone, and Georgia State gets on the board quickly. We knew both of these teams were going to score potentially a lot this afternoon. Georgia State first on the board as the extra point is up and good. The Panthers lead it 7-0. to zero. The team's leading receiver, Sam Pinckney, hadn't had an opportunity on that series. He gets one, See. and it punctuates the drive. Well, a long, methodical Opening drive for Georgia State gets them on the board first against the Mountaineers. You know, this is a fast scoring team, but they've scored 27 touchdowns. Now they're 28th. But surprisingly enough, this is their fifth touchdown drive they've had between 11 and 15 plays. They don't mind grinding it out. They're an explosive team. Good start for the Panthers of Georgia State. Returnable kick for Stephen Jones, who's brought down near the 20, but there is laundry on the field. And we'll see. With today's head referee, Marshall Lewis, what that is about. Uh, an extra flag coming out afterward, courtesy of Mr. Lewis. Maybe some extracurricular activity as Jones just now gives up the football and heads back to the app sideline.
There are two falls on the play, both by the receiving team. Holding, receiving team, number 51. That penalty is declined. Holding, receiving team, number 33. That penalty is accepted. 10 yards, first down. Couple of holding penalties. It'll go 10 yards in addition to the play as App State hits the field for the first time offensively led by senior Zach Thomas and the superlatives just keep coming and coming and coming for Thomas. Touchdown pass away from tying for, for excuse me, getting third all time on App's all time list as he hands off to open things up and Georgia State's defense pushing back the ball carrier as that's Marcus Williams Jr. First this, to touch it for the This is the a Mountain Georgia Gators. State defense that's only allowing about less than two, 125 yards per ball game on the ground. They, they're tough and they're active. You look at that 13 play 75, this, this is what they like. They want to run about 80 plays, keep that number in. So it's about 40 per half. They're aggressive on defense. They score points on offense. Appalachian State's got to be very poised this afternoon. Thomas fakes the handoff, looks downfield, swallowed up in the pocket, and that is a big sack to get things started. Number three, Chris Bacon. The safety comes in to make the play. Chris Bacon, along with Antavius Lane, are two of the best safeties in the Sun Belt Conference. They don't mind coming up and making stick. Both of those guys have well over 20 tackles. Bacon with 21, Lane has 40. They put pressure on you, they can come up, but they, it was nowhere for Thomas to actually throw the football. Good job on the backside of coverage for Georgia State. Third and long for Appalachian. More of a run-heavy offense so far this season. Thomas bailed out by the block from the backfield. It's a pass toward the sideline. It's caught. And not quite enough for the first down, I don't believe, Stan. Well, Hennigan, a sure-handed receiver, you talked about some of the records that we've seen with Thomas. Hennigan's already caught for over 2,000 yards this season. I mean, his career comes back to meet that. When he loses about three yards of ground on the comeback, not enough for the first down. And if you're a Georgia State fan, you've got to be very happy with what you've seen on the first drives offensively as well as defensively. So that stops the Mountaineers series as the punt is away and a fair catch called by Georgia State. They will take over at the 43-yard line on the other side as they lead it 7-0 over the Mountaineers. Back in Boone and Destin Coates coughs it up, the football on the first run of the series for Georgia State. App State comes up with it and has the fumble recovery right away. DeMarco Jackson is going with the football. The fumble recovered by the defense. Hugged, he first down by his teammates. Team. Coates comes out of this real quickly. And he, I don't know if he ever really had good possession of the ball or not, but it's a bounding around. A lot of things going at the bottom of that pile, but keep your eye on number 52 in goal. Some way, somehow, he comes out with the football. Great job there on the inside. Making the takeaway. Caleb Sperlin, that of a touchdown reception a week ago, is the one that strips the football away from Coates. And you need to play. And we both coaches talked this week about we've got to play solid. We can't make mistakes. We can't turn the ball over. Both teams play explosive offense as well as defense, and they try to make plays. And you see the first big break of the football game goes Appalachian's way. Sperlin with his second takeaway of the season. That's a huge play for Appalachian State. And it, of course, will, will be reviewed as it is a turnover, but potentially – after going three and out, that gives the football back to Appalachian State. Much better field position right around the middle of the field. And one of the problems sometimes with going to replay, making sure everything is right, it takes away that sudden momentum. You'd like to force a turnover, and everybody's excited. You try to maybe hit them deep with a long pass play. Not to say that that won't do that nail on their first play, but the, but the, the shot factor. You know, Georgia State was thinking, okay, we're going to score again. We're excited. And then they've got to make sudden change on the defensive end. But these, these are two 
similar football teams, big, strong offensive lines, aggressive, tough, nasty defenses, teams that can score the way, and, and, and they don't hurt themselves. Uh, both of them, I think, are tied for number three in the turnover uh, takeaway margin in the conference. So, again, they try to make some plays, and the first big break has gone the, the way of the Mountaineers. Yeah, that was a concern for head coach for Appalachian State, Sean Clark, entering this week is his team's ball security, right? Uh, didn't necessarily think that After that was going to be an issue right Stay on the, the field stand. First Georgia down. State. And the call on the field stands. Keep your eye on Sperlin, 97. Sperlin rips it out. Ball bounds around. 52 is eyeing it. He's eyeing it. He's eyeing it. And somehow another DeMarco Johnson, uh, Jackson comes up with the fumble recover. Watch this inside. Bounce, bounce, bounce. A lot of hands on it. It's Some a compromised it position goal. for DeMarco to come up with that. But App State with the football. It's their second offensive drive. The handoff. Cameron Peoples with his first carry of the day. It's short game. Dietrich Harrington, the number two rusher in the Sun Belt, only behind Coates, not starting this football game. Probably will not see him this afternoon. Kind of banged up the last couple of weeks, took a few hits against Texas State. So, again, Cameron Peoples rushed for over 300 yards this season along with uh, uh, Nate Noel. We'll see, and also Marcus Williams. They're going to run three running backs at some point in time this afternoon. Man in motion. Thomas gives the handoff. And the sweep gets some yardage, about five for Appalachian State. So productive with the run so far. And you talk about the running backs stand for Appalachian State. This, the season began with sort of a, a level depth chart with all of these guys. Harrington really was the one who stepped ahead and, and, and really separated himself to get the bulk of their carries thus far. That seven touchdown mark leads the Sun Belt Conference. Well, those three running backs of Harrington, Williams, and Peoples have rushed for over 1,200 yards this year. Thomas fakes the handoff, gets the pass toward the sideline, and that'll get the first down, and then some for Appalachian State. Jalen Virgil comes away with the catch. Jalen Virgil's another one of those guys that's very, very versatile in this team. Play fake inside, try to find your tight end coming to the outside, try to make a nice little play, get enough for the first down, keep the chains moving. Henry Pearson on that reception makes the play. Again, that's the versatility in this App State offense. They like to run, they like to pound, but they use those tight ends very effectively as blockers as well as receivers. Good check, that's Pearson. Now Thomas fakes the handoff. Not much of anywhere to go, but he squeaks through the pocket and is tripped up from behind after about a five-yard gain. The athleticism, being able to make a play from nothing. Jeffrey Clark may have saved him, even a bigger play, the defensive end for Georgia State. But Thomas found it, nothing inside, couldn't go deep, and says, hey, I will tuck it in, picks up about seven yards on the play. It's marked as a seven-yard gain, that's right. And as much as we talk about the running backs, they've all had at least one 100 rushing yard game. Zach Thomas in that category, too, as he hands off this time to Peoples, who is stopped up at the line of scrimmage and pushed backward. So now, Appalachian State with a third down and three ahead. Snap to Thomas. Quick throw, that's Pearson again. On the little hitch route, they get the first. Knowing your personnel, Pearson this time comes in, gets a play, you need about four or five yards, gives me about a six yard route, gets in, now you try to go tempo. Thomas with the handoff to Peoples, the line of scrimmage now the 16, and he stopped short of that on first down. Just how tough is this Georgia State defensive front to run against? They've held three teams already this season to less than 100 yards rushing. The anomaly in that was the was the Coastal Carolina game that everybody continues to talk about. Don't know what happened that day in the big loss. Thomas looking toward the end zone. The corner laying out, and it's just off the fingertips. And incomplete. It's Miller, Miller Gibbs. 
And Gibbs is a kid that came in last week, played well, had three catches, and got his first touchdown. This is a nice play down the sideline. Looking back into the sun, just doesn't secure. Doesn't make that little triangle of his hands. And he's thinking about it right now. Boy, I may not get a better pass thrown to get the rest of the season. Now third down. Thomas looking back toward the sideline as they reset. What you don't want to do if you're Appalachian State is to take a sack. Thomas again, same corner of the end zone and a flag on the incompletion. This is going to probably be a hold or either a P.I. On, on Quavian White. And again, I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be. That's interference. Defense, Defense, number 20. I rule the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. So it's a pass interference. I'm not sure if you're going to see a better set of receivers versus defensive backs on both sides of the ball than you're going to see today. That's Quavian White. A little too much contact there early in the round and then later on against Jalen Virgil. So first and goal now. Yeah, it's a big break for Appalachian State, and this theoretically, their bread and butter. Goal to go. Thomas fakes the handoff to Peoples, fades it, looking for Virgil again, the opposite corner of the end zone, and overthrows it. A little surprise. They have three straight passes for the Mountaineers. They'll come back in usually with a little of a jumbo package. This is when those, those tight ends, an extra back. They'll bring another lineman in sometimes. That's how Sperlin kind of snuck away last Saturday and got his touchdown. They'll bring another tight end in the ball game and see what can happen. I think you just saw Pearson come back in. This is that little diamond set. They run a lot of things out of this. Man to the outside. This is power football. Thomas hands off. Marcus Williams is stopped short of the goal line by a couple yards, maybe between two and three. One of the problems Appalachians had this year is red zone efficiency. They've not really been able to cash in. They've scored points, but they've only got 17 touchdowns out of the 25 attempts they've had inside the red zone, something that was a concern to Coach Clark. They want touchdowns this afternoon as opposed to field goals. Power football once again. Here we go. Another third down for App State. They're two for three on such plays. Thomas. The handoff. Peoples stuffed. And Georgia State will force the fourth down, presumably getting App State to kick a field goal. Tavius Lane goes in there, makes a play. Keep your eye on the football. Good job there, breaking the line of scrimmage. You come up, you got to make a hit. Somebody make a hit, they make the hit. Trey John Stevens McQueen punctuating it with some energy at the end for Georgia State. As now Chandler Staten on to kick for Appalachian. Hold is down. The kick is up and through. So Appalachian State on the board for the first time today. Reels it within four. Seven to three here in the first quarter. Georgia State leads. Appalachian State in its second offensive series goes 12 plays, 46 yards, cannot muster a touchdown, but they get the 21-yard field goal out of Chandler Staten and will kick off once again to Georgia State. Quavian White, very involved on that last series as the cornerback, back to receive the kick. Riker Casey with another bomb. This one not quite to the end zone, and it's a fair catch near the goal line. And yeah. instead, 25. yeah, that's gonna 25. be that's gonna be a touchback. Yep. So a touchback as Georgia State plays it safe for the most part on kickoff returns. Talking to, to Coach Clark this week, and one of the things that he was very impressed with his team last week in their solid win was was their kickoff coverage, their kickoff team. You're kicking the ball deep, gives a chance to start the defense. Okay, let's see if you can carry it 20, 75 yards of scoring. There's a score and drive, 12 plays, 46 yards, get the field goal, 7 3 ball game. And now let's see how you adjust if you're Georgia State. Quad Brown receives 
the snap, fakes the handoff, and takes off himself. Nearly achieving a first down, nautical score. They love the development of this young freshman quarterback. Strong arm, solid legs, getting better and better in his decision making. Another fumble. This time with a handoff, and it's loose. Looked like Brown had a chance as it bounced back toward him. That's the second time where the running back, the, the miss point, the running back quarterback exchange hasn't been there. This time, Tucker Gregg. Who's known to go inside and pound? Never looked like he got the football. Georgia State very lucky. The ball kind of kicks and curls and runs and goes backwards, and now you got a third down short situation again. And it looked like Greg even smacked it back toward his quarterback Brown. This time, the handoff toward the far side, and that one's good for a first down. You hear Georgia about State, nice and patient. You hear about success stories for both schools, and you know, we talk about Sperlin being a walk on at Appalachian State and having success. The same thing can be said about Tucker Gregg, a kid that walked onto the program and would do anything he could to be able to get on the field and work his time. Has had some solid football games this year, had a big rushing game early in the year against Arkansas State, where he went over 140 yards, and they really like his versatility. Can catch some passes, can go in between the tackles. Nice yardage first down. Brown this time alone in the backfield, was running the whole way. A bit of a counter before he slides down after a short game. Again, one of the things that both coaches talked about was, he, was in the case of Georgia State, was getting into an offensive rhythm. And you see them very, very comfortable being able to do whatever they want to do, especially on first down. If you're picking up four, five, six, seven yards on first down, it makes the play calling so much easier. This time it's a second down and six. And in motion, Brown goes down the field and a nice job defensively for App State as it's swatted away. That was Gene Charles on the pass breakup. Again, the play action fake and all the motion allows a little bit of time to perceive, see what's over the field. And a nice defensive play again by one of the better cornerbacks in the country, Shamar Gene Charles. That's his 13th pass breakup of the season. So now a crucial third down for Georgia State. Third and six. Brown, not a lot of time, overthrows the bubble screen, and then it was he even got a hand on it at App State. The late pressure forces Brown to throw this football a little bit off balance. McCoy nearly is able to get it, then Harrington almost comes up with an interception there. But again, the Appalachian State defense this time puts a little more pressure on Brown, gets him off his mark, has to throw the ball a little sooner than he wanted to. The crossing route maybe should have been caught if it's lower. But again, Appalachian does what they got to do, three and out. Michael Hayes on to punt for Georgia State. Sends it back to the corner. And a fair catch called, received for App State as that will be downed at the eight yard line for the Mountaineers as they trot back out. But a sigh of relief, I'm sure, for Sean Clark and the Mountaineers coaching staff getting that stop after what turned out to be a touchdown on their first defensive set. Well, you want to be able, in this case, to bend, do not break. They didn't break. And one of the keys of this ball game, we talked about explosion plays, not giving up the big touchdown. This is a Georgia State team that can score. They can score in bunches. They can score fast. Good job defensively now. Back deep in your own territory. Have a solid drive if you're the Mountaineers. Thomas with the handoff. A little bit of clunkiness there on the exchange, and it's stopped in the backfield. It was a gain of one, though, for Nate Noel getting his first carry. Keem Smith, the nose tackle in the middle of things, the, the defensive front. They run a three-man front primarily for Georgia State. Wilson, Smith, Willis, number 90. They're very active, they're very strong. And not able to get a snap off before the signaling of the end of the first quarter. Seven to three, Mountaineers with the football trailing. Darren Vaught, Stan Luter back with you for the start of the second quarter in Boone. We're at 7-3, Georgia State with the lead. Significant for a couple of reasons, okay? 
in this series' history, they've never defeated Appalachian State. Now, that only goes six games back, but the Mountaineers 6-0 and against the Panthers. Also, I, I mean, we talked about it in the open. Both of these teams very high scoring. It hasn't quite been that way yet as Appalachian State has a second down deep in its own territory. Zach Thomas receives the snap. Sends it over toward the sideline, and it's knocked away incomplete. Quavian White with the pass breakup. Well, forgive me, that's Jalen Jones this time as White is on, lined up on the opposite side. It really doesn't matter because you got <laughs> They're both I mean, good. You know, you got <laughs> Quavian White on one corner, Jalen Jones on the other. Lane plays a free safety. Like I said, very, very similar to Appalachian State. These cornerbacks and linebackers come up and make plays. Third down for the Mountaineers. Thomas evades a tackle. Scampers down the sideline, has the first and then some, a handful more as he runs out of bounds. When you have quarterbacks that can run the football, you always have to protect on the backside. Nearly sacked right there, almost in the end zone. And then the ability to recognize there's nobody on the backside because the linebackers and safeties are in coverage. Their backs have turned it, and smartly, Thomas is able to get enough for the first down. You haven't rushed for over 240 yards this season, a couple of touchdowns without being able to recognize holes in the defense. Good play there. It's a 16-yard run for Thomas, who now gives on a non-play. Well, check that. The spot's going to be a yard and a half ahead of the initial line of scrimmage there. Blake Carroll comes up from his inside linebacker spot, 42, and just says, look, you know, Hadn't really been busy much this afternoon, so I think I'll get into this football game. The thing that you talk about with this Georgia State team is that they're very aggressive. They do not mind hitting you. Forced 20 sacks, a lot of turnovers. And remember what we said, they've held three teams to less than 100 yards rushing. Thomas, a quick pass. Received, bobbled, but held on to as the tackle is made, and it's another short gain for Appalachian State. What I like about this team you talk about Jalen Jones on coverage a moment ago. This time comes up and makes a sure tackle that the cornerbacks are very, very solid. Tack. They do a great job in one-on-one -on -one defense, not only as against, as against passes, but also coming up and making tackles. That was Christian Wells, the redshirt freshman, on the reception. Another one of those third down situations. Keep a drive going. Got to get the first down. Third down in the short two. Mountaineers three for five on third downs. Handoff. Nowhere to go. Peoples is stuffed in the backfield, and it forces another fourth down. <laughs> That's Jeff Clark, and he's doing a little happy dance. Why? Because he got to hit somebody. Big guy. Goes six feet, about 265, 270 pounds, only a freshman. Gets in there, plugs the hole, and stops the Mountaineers. So it'll be another punt. For Appalachian State, Xavier Sabach blasts it down the field. Reeled in and returnable by White. So Georgia State football, 7-3. They lead it still here in the second. Georgia State football once again here in the second quarter. They lead Appalachian State, who as good of a rushing team as they are, have had to punt it away a couple of times. Big reason why, 1.8 yards per carry so far. They have not run the ball effectively as normal. And the Panthers, who are a touchdown and a punt through their first two offensive series. Get things started as Brown hands off up the middle and App State closes up the gap in a hurry. When you've got teams that are very similar as these two are on the stat line defensively and offensively, it's the little things. You had a fumble that, that sets up a touchdown. You have a couple of explosion plays. The little things this afternoon are going to win and keeping yourself out of long yard situations. One of those keys, I think, if you're Georgia State fan, yeah, they're set up in the long second and ten. They've got to be able to get things off first down. And in motion, Brown 
hands it off to that man who gets to the sideline and a couple of yards gained before being brought down. Yeah, Ryan Huff is having a really nice football game from his safety spot. You read the option, and the first thing you've got to do is take care of the dive back. You look at the option guy. What's Brown going to do? Don't let him turn up. So he makes the pitch, and, there, and, and Huff is there for about a three-yard pickup. And again, the linebackers, very, very active in the defensive set for Appalachian State. They're going to be called on to be sure tacklers, similar to what we've seen out of Georgia State. Third and medium, Brown out of the shotgun. Pressure has his pass deflected, and it falls well short of any receiver he may have been intended for. And it brings up fourth down. Obviously, third down situation, third pass, and get a chance to turn the big dogs loose. Demetrius Taylor, number nine, comes from there. He gets a little pressure on it, makes him throw it a little sooner. Almost intercepted Nick Hampton following along. But that's the type of pressure that I think if you're Appalachian State that you have to apply this afternoon to Quad Brown. So the second punt of the day for Hayes. Bounces back. Well received there for App State as they get it at the 25-yard line. Nice job there by Malik Williams to gain a little bit of extra yardage for the Mountaineers. Back in Boone where the Mountaineers hosting the Panthers of Georgia State trailing by four. That man right there, head coach Sean Clark and his quarterback Zach Thomas would like to change that. With this next offensive drive for App State. First down from the 25 back in their own territory. Thomas receives the shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, delivers toward Thomas Hennigan, a couple of fingertips on it in white, but it falls to the grass. Man. You've got Hennigan in man coverage. But we talk about it, and here's a great example of the closing speed of the coverage of this Georgia State team. Watch this. They get there quickly. That's the first guy. That's Wilson. Ball's a bobble. Bent around three or four different white shirts had an opportunity to get the interception. It falls harmlessly to the ground. Mountaineers dodge one right there, but the quickness of this Georgia State defensive team. This time, a handoff and a juke inside by Williams. Really like Marcus Williams, the senior. Has the speed to go to the outside, but not necessarily afraid to go inside. And what you've got to do, I think, if you're Appalachian State, a team that loves to run the football, and they've had like five of the six games they've had this year, they've rushed for over 250 yards. Just keep pounding, keep pounding. Third down for them now, and four to gain. Thomas receives the snap. Looking downfield, flushed out. Now back inside the pocket, eases a pass to Williams, who's bullied back to the line of scrimmage. Blake Carroll with the hit that time. Get him off his mark. He's got to run to the outside. Thinks you've got a receiver there. And again, another one of those guys that come from Atlanta, Georgia, and they don't mind hit. Play care. The junior, a backup <laughs> for a couple of years. This is his first shot this season, that is, at the starting role in that position. And he forces the fourth down and the punt, which is away for App State. White calls the fair catch, and it will be Georgia State ball at the 42. And we talked about it, but well, we'll tell you after the break. <laughs> Back in Appalachian State, Georgia State with a 7-3 lead, but not without their share of struggles. A few fumbles, one of which they've lost so far as they embark on this offensive series from their own 36. Brown the handoff this time. And again, before being gang tackled by App State defenders, a gain of nine for the Panthers.
as Jemias Williams' first carry. This time a deep ball delivered by Brown down the sideline off the fingertips of his intended tar target, Pinckney. Sam Pinckney with the only touchdown so far. Yeah, Sam Pinckney, one of the outstanding receivers for this team. And, and they feel like with McCoy back, they've got double trouble on both sides. And again, locked in the battle with John Charles. A little hand fighting as the route began. A little hand fighting at the end. Good job by the officials. No harm, no foul, no flag. Pinckney goes off for the third down for Georgia State. Brown fakes the handoff to Coates, takes it himself and dives for the line, gets it by about a yard and a half, and it's a first down. And that's something that they'll, they'll give a message down to, to Brown that time. So much influence that time keeping the football. Coates keeps it. He's going to pick up about 10 to 12 yards. And again, Appalachian State's got to have discipline. You've got to have eye discipline. You've got to have gap control discipline. Because if not, Brown can make you look bad in the open field. Georgia State now six for eight on third down. As Brown looks toward the sideline, it's caught by McCoy before being pummeled by a couple of App State defenders. Yeah, remember what we said early in this ball game, and we'll talk about a lot, doing things on first down. The, the drive before this, they started there. We got uh, nine yards on the first play, didn't get anything, got the first down eventually with Brown. This time, first and 10, they pick up 11 yards on the pass. Makes the play calling so easy and makes it very difficult if you're a defensive player like Appalachian State. What's coming? Is it run pass? They're picking up a lot of plays, but they can go into their world, you know, the book and pick out anything they want to because they've got you off balance. And changing speeds a lot, as and you see there tempo. with a the, the quick pass to McCoy, getting them a few yards before second down. Into the first quarter, they've run 20 plays. Coach this time has a big hole over on the right side, nearly gets the first before being brought down. Brad Glenn, the offensive coordinator for Georgia State, has done a really nice job of, of getting some offensive tempo, keeping things mixed up, keeping you off balance. They've had a lot of success on third down. Here's a third down and short. And they can really do anything they want in this territory. Too wide to the lower side. Brown fakes the handoff. Doubled back behind the line of scrimmage and brought down with relative ease. App State was all over that. That time, Nick Hamp, he said, you're not going to get me again. And just in case you didn't know, I'll bring Mr. Cobb along with you. Good <laughs> job of reading it. That was the discipline. Someone takes the dive. I'll make sure we get the quarterback. And let's throw him for a little bit of a loss, a loss of two. When we talked to head coach for App State, Sean Clark, earlier in the week, Stan, he mentioned gap discipline being huge for them against six, this team. Six of 10, 60% on fourth down this season for Georgia State. So here we go. Brown receives the snap as they go for it. Floats up the pass. Nowhere near his target. That was Aubrey Payne, the tight end, the intended receiver. Great job again defensively having to answer the bail, putting pressure on the quarterback, getting him off his mark. Trey Cobb, once again, the pressure fourth down you don't get it and again it's these little things like this Appalachian State's got us to vote it back and make a stop Georgia State feels like they've got some momentum now the momentum switch to the team you know in the, in the black and gold so now can you put together some type of sustained drive 640 and this is that time when coach Clark talks about the middle eight where you want to win those last four or five minutes of the first half and then win the early parts of the second half this is the time for them and off Cameron Peoples powers his way through the middle and gets the first on an 11 yard carry right up the gut. Pounding in between the offensive line, a very veteran offensive line for Appalachian State. Noah Hannon, 50. Ryan Newell is number 58. Bear Hunter, 51. Going right up the gut. First charge timeout, Georgia State. Of a change be a 30 on the offensive timeout. line today for Appalachian State. But yes, their usual five starters, the second most experienced in the country behind only the University of Virginia in terms of career starts. And a timeout. You know, and you, you talk a little bit about those guys are veterans. A lot of starts, a lot of experience. They played in big games. They understand how to continue to wear wear you down, and they work as one unit. Interesting, they're not a 
a lot of big, big guys. Their average weight's about 285 pounds. The offensive line at Georgia State, conversely, is about 300 pounds. But what they have is great footwork. They work well together. And, and, they, and here's the thing. If you watch them for any period of time, they get off their blocks. They block you. They keep you. They, they move you the direction they want to move you. And what has happened is having one of the best running games in the conference because of it. Out of Georgia State's first timeout of the half, another run for App State. Gets them a couple of yards. Make it three, as the marker indicates. So second and seven on the way. I, I mentioned the changes up front for App State. No Cooper Hodges at right tackle today. They shifted Cole Garrison, who's normally the left tackle, over to that side and brought bench player Anderson Hardy to start at the left tackle. Still, it stands a lot of experience. Thomas receives the snap on second down. Finds the out route toward the sideline, and it's caught and run out of bounds by Malik Williams. Tough pass to complete, going to your right, throwing at an angle, trying to get the ball away from the defender. Williams does a nice job concentrating, catching the ball, staying in bounds, but yet they, they don't really pick up. It's about a one-yard pass play, and again, that goes to the coverage of Georgia State. So now you're facing a third and third and medium, third and about five, third and about six. Thomas come out with Thomas seven of eleven passing today, but that's only for 37 yards. So a lot of those quick routes on third down here. Has to spin away. In pursuit is Georgia State and they knock the football loose. It's picked up. Panthers with a clear path to the end zone here, but there is a flag back near the 30-yard line. That was Thomas Gore who picked it up and took it all the way to the end zone. And it will go as a face mask against Georgia State, so I don't believe that touchdown will stand. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Sometimes you just got to be very, very lucky. Gore thought he had him a pickup and scoop and score. Hand right inside there, very the easy, very good, good call, very defense. easy call. Jordan Strawn does it. Flags come out, ball goes up. Gore doesn't have six. Appalachian's drive continues. But again, you saw the pressure that we've seen all afternoon that Zach Thomas has had to deal with. Couldn't get the pass off. Couldn't find an opening area to run the football. And again, we talked about penalties. We talked about getting breaks. Breaks are going Mountaineer way on this drive. And the ball spotted all the way at the Georgia State 35. A big break for Appalachian State after the face mask by Strawn, who had a sack in earlier and has had a productive day. This time the handoff again to Noel, the freshman. Whistle blows as he's on top of the pile after a short game. You got to get a feeling right now in, in positive territory for the Mountaineers. They're trying to set you up with some time, some pass. Virgil on the outside in man coverage. Hennigan's always been a sure-handed receiver. Been nicked up a little bit, got him in the lower portion of your screen in the slot. We've been told Hennigan is close to 100% as he's been this season. As Thomas drops back and is going to go to the other sideline, some contact, no flag, and an incomplete pass. Again, the battles, the battles. Let's take, let's take a look at this again. Virgil at the end of the play you see the defender just kind of get stumbles into the play and that's you know that's that's uh, an interesting play they didn't make a call I think it, I think one it wasn't catchable two is incidental contact yeah there's the hand fighting which yeah. is is normal there yeah. by Bra Bryquise Brown the defender on that pass so now another third down for Appalachian State but Sean Clark and his coaching staff want a time out to think this thing through Appalachian State just three of seven on third downs they haven't been able to, to get big chunks of yardage through the air but they're going to need something of that sort here and I think it's a, a good good timeout by, by coach Tony Peterson offensive coordinator because 
where do we go? Where do we go? We, we try to take our deep shots, nothing there. First charge time what we out. tried to do is swing passes. Coverage has been very good for Georgia State. So you can't do you try to go in between the tackles, you try to keep pounding it. Yeah, that's what Appalachian State does. They run the football and they're not embarrassed to let you know we're gonna try to knock you in the mouth and then if you didn't get enough of it, we're gonna give you some more. But right now the Georgia State defensive front has been able to answer that. So very interesting call here on third down, about nine in plus territory. Got you, a kicker in state that, that has the leg. It is long of the year. is only about 40 yards against Arkansas State. His career long, 53. 53 You're right yeah. around there now. Yeah. So crucial that you don't take a sack or, no. or have a massive loss of yardage. Thomas with the handoff. That's Williams who will try to center things up in between the hash marks. And he gets a couple of yards out of it. Or maybe a yard. Well, the, anytime you see down. a play call like that, you got to feel like that was setting up third down to make fourth down a little bit easier. We picked up about a yard on the play. So here we go with a big fourth down conversion for the Mountaineers. And no Staten. As it's Zach Thomas receiving the shotgun snap, a fourth down attempt for the Mountaineers. Keep your eye on the tight ends. Malik Williams in motion, top of your screen. Thomas. Heads out that way, that tight end, like you said, a reach for it, and I don't think he got it. He was about a yard short. The pass was completed to Miller Gibbs, his second catch of the day. Miller Gibbs did a really nice job of getting his shoulders turned, looking back for the football. The problem was, was he, he didn't have enough depth on the route. Really on the field is that the runner did so not turns back the right game. there and catches. Then when he gets ready to hit up field, he's got a few yards to make, and I don't think. Ooh, I don't think he made it. That's an impressive effort. You saw the back half of his body yeah. low to the ground, but keeping the knee from hitting. And the ruling is that it will be a turnover on downs and Panthers football. I love the call. I love the call. The short yardage pass to your tights coming out. And you found yourselves about a yard and a half short that time. And again, Georgia State, you have some momentum goes. You get a fumble. You don't get a fumble. You get a turnover. Bam, it goes back and forth. And this has just become one of those games that's going to maybe win one in the trenches. From their own 26, Brown has a pass up the middle, knocked away. Good defensive play there from App State and Caden Smith with the breakup. We talk so much about John Charles and, and Jolly, but Caden Smith does a really good job in closing from his safety spot, trying to make some plays, comes in, reads the underneath route, gets his hand on the deflection, second down and long. This time, a handoff for a big gain and a first down for Tucker Gregg again. He's only had a few carries in this one, but he's been impactful so far. Well, Tucker Gregg, and we talked about the Appalachian State running backs, but Gregg, Coates, and their very own Williams. Coates is the guy that will go in between. Gregg will go in between the tackles. Coates can, but he's more of an outside guy. But Coates and Greggs and Williams have combined for nearly 1,000 yards, 943 to be exact, at a 1288 rushing. I say that to say they've got weapons, and they use them different ways. That's not counting the yards that you get out of Brown, the quarterback. Greg saw him go in between the tackles in and make, make plays. Yeah, one yard gained by Greg on the sec his second consecutive carry. Now Brown drops back to pass. Got him. Airs it out deep. It drops at the 20-yard line. Again, some hand fighting there. And you didn't really see an effort to go after and catch the football by Terrence Dixon there. Terrence Dixon may be the fastest guy on this Georgia State football team. They get him matched up against a linebacker. And a nice job by Harrington. Brandon Harrington, the kid out of Pittsburgh, North Carolina, is locked in man coverage. He was an old running back in high school, and he goes step for step with the speedy Mr. Dixon, third down. Harrington's done a nice job defensively for App State, the return score in their last game. That one overthrown toward the sideline. And it's now fourth down for Georgia State. Good defensive stand for the Mountaineers there after going for it on fourth themselves, taking a risk offensively rather than 
attempting a long field goal. And they'll get the football back with now two and a half minutes remaining in the half. Plenty of time if you're Appalachian to put a little drive together. The punt is away. Williams calls fair catch. And it'll be Mountaineers football at the 22. So a bit of a lengthy field to traverse here. And keep in mind, Mountaineers have two timeouts remaining. This is that middle eight that the coaching staff talks so much about throughout the season, but especially in the last few ball games. So you score right now and you get the kick, you get the kickoff, you get the ball back to start the second half. So it could be a, a definite game swing right now. We'll see what they do, how they handle this final two minutes and 23 seconds, but something to keep in mind now what your play call. Do you try to extend the field a little bit? Thomas tried the handoff to Peoples. Looked like he tried to pull it back, lost his footing and lost the football, but dives on top of it. Yeah, and Peoples kind of gives into motion, like put it in the cradle, put it in the hands. Not an ideal start to a two-ish minute drill. Second and 12. Pressure is on. Thomas, nowhere to go. Has to grasp the football firmly as he's brought down in the backfield by Hardrick Willis. And let's see if Georgia State will elect to take a timeout. Try to see if they can force the third down and get the ball back. The 21st sack of the season by this Georgia State defense. They, they come at you in waves. Second, and Willis timeout. comes up and gets Georgia a State. big time play. For, time what out. could have been a big Wait, play for him. Willis fourth sack. Think about this. Willis a junior, Akeem Smith, we've called his name several times, Jeffrey Clark, a freshman, a very, very young, very, very active front three for Georgia State. And they know that they put enough pressure, they feel like that the defensive bats can do the job on their back line. This is a tough defense, and Appalachian State's finding it out first and foremost right now. Yeah, the senior in, Dante Wilson, was the first in on that play. I mean, this is an active defensive front. They've given... Thomas some fits these past couple of series. They come at you. <laughs> they just come, I'm very impressed watching them on tape the last couple of days that they, they come at you a lot of ways. They've had a sack in every football game they played this year and you can see why they're aggressive. Thomas goes to Malik Williams on the screen. Dances away from one tackle and is stopped up around the 20 so a gain of three as forward progress gives him. Look at the number of white shirts around. The ball carry on that play led by number 37 Hayward. And again, making plays, making stops. Put yourself in position as a quick scoring team. And the third and final timeout of the half taken by Georgia State prior to the fourth down for Appalachian State. And that's sort of what we were talking about with Zach Thomas he's now 9 for 14 passing for only 48 yeah. yards yeah. and and part of it is is strategic right I mean Sean Clark and his coaching well, staff want to put the ball in playmakers hands and let them make plays. exactly that's part of it but also there's nowhere to throw the football you can't the guys are being covered deep you're looking for your second and third person going through your progression and if this score holds up or if Appalachia's not able to get on the board, it'll be the lowest first first half they've had this season. They had the seventh against Marshall. As Sabach boots it away. White calls for fair catch around the 30, but drifts back to the Panthers 26 or so. It is spotted at the 30, and that's where they will pick up offensively. And let's see on this series for Georgia State. Well, they try to go into a tempo, a fast offense, try to stretch it deep to some of their outstanding receivers. They've had 11 TDs this year. This kind of boggles mind. They've had 11 touchdowns, two minutes or less this year. So they can score quickly, and they've been kind of concerned they're going. They like to run it, but let's see if they're going to put it in the air. Five wide receivers on this set. Cornelius Brown, quick pass that time as it's caught. And he's quickly brought down Roger Carter again, the senior tight end. And remember, they have no timeouts remaining, so they're in their two-minute offense, so hurry up. Appalachian State with two timeouts remaining for the half. 
The rush wow. got there quickly as DeMarco Jackson records his first set. Jackson's had a very active ball game. Watch him come out. There's a little blitz there. No one's able to pick him up. Just a little loop. Gets in there, takes Brown down. That slows your offense down. So the loss makes it third and long for Georgia State. Brown, you saw as he just went down to the ground, kind of knew what he had to do there, Stan. And a timeout called by App State. They have one remaining here in the first half. That's such a huge play now, faced with a third down and 13. You feel like you may be able to get the football back. You stop Georgia State on their third down. You force them to punt. You get the ball back with about maybe 35, 30 seconds like that. Plenty of time to see if you can get your offense in gear and you still got a timeout remaining. So that's a big time play by Jackson. Appalachian State running out of time to make some, some noise and, and get it more points on the board in this half, but you mentioned earlier they do get the second half kickoff to begin things after the break. And if they can mitigate the Georgia State offense here, it's a, a bit of a win. You still go down trailing at half. Brown hands off Greg, wide open gap. Down the sideline he goes, misses a tackle. Must have stepped out of bounds because whistles blow, and he's going to be marked down at the 25-yard line. But Tucker Greg bursts expecting, through. Expecting pass. They give you the draw. I told you they've got a lot of weapons. This guy goes right up the middle, gets to the outside, steps out of bounds about the 25-yard line, keeps Appalachian's defense totally off bounds. And everything we talked about about the stop and the, four, and the eight minutes kind of goes out the window right now. A 48-yard rush is Brown sends it airborne and out of bounds and incomplete second down he tried to sneak roger carter that tight end h back whatever you want to call him out of the backfield a little wheel route down the sideline nothing there and again if you georgia state now continue to be aggressive continue to be smart what, a minute and six seconds the one thing you do not want to do if you're a georgia state is to have to take a sack See if the Appalachian puts a little more pressure on the quarterback, Brown. Coates with him in the backfield. He drops back, sends out a pass down the sideline. Excellent catch, keeping both feet in, it looked like, and bringing it within the five-yard line for Georgia State. That ball traveled a long way across the hash, across the numbers. Trash is able to find a little soft spot in the zone. Catch it, goes out of bounds. Doesn't matter, clock stops on the first down. Red shirt freshman to red shirt freshman. Jamari Thrash his first catch of the day. This time Brown goes deep into the back of the end zone and it's knocked away intended for Terrence Dixon. How many times have you seen this play in a goal line situation? You bring the back out of the backfield and try to find an open area that time. Not able to hold the ball was Dixon, but you also had another receiver, that being Carter, keeping him off balance. They've got two wide receivers in the set, but they've got a power guy inside in coach. Brought an extra tight end that of Georgia State. Do you go between the tackles? Do you go outside? Second and goal. End around, handoff. Nice spin move there, but another good tackle defensively for Appalachian State. Brings down the ball carrier. Matlin Marshall on the reverse. They try to use a little trickeration from time to time. They're not afraid to do it in the red zone. That time running a little reverse with Marshall. Kind of thought he was going to throw the football. Didn't see a receiver there. Didn't want to force a turnover. Wisely goes inside. But now, again, keep your eye on 43. This is a situation they'd really like to run. Uh, 45, I should say. Car out of the backfield. Fake on the handoff. You called it. Intended for Carter, but overthrown and through the back of the end zone. That's a tight window to get that ball to him. But they really like to use Carter on goal line situations, sneak him out of the back, protect the backside. And there he is. This ball might have been deflected at the end. A lot of guys in goal uniforms around the football. Fortunately for Appalachian State, is not able to have Caitlin Smith on the on the late contact. So now it goes to Noel Ruiz, the kicker for Georgia State on the field goal attempt. And timeout 
Appalachian State before he's able to do so. Ruiz is a kid from Wilson. Played it. Power down in Eastern North Carolina, Fike High School. Played his four years at A&T. And, and had a lot of success. In fact, I saw him kick the game winner. It's funny. I saw him kick the game winner against Elon last year. Last play of the game, that was his career long of over 50 yards. He's got a strong leg, you know, in his fifth season in the grad transfer at, at Georgia State and, and has gotten, I think, and the coaches even agree, has gotten even better as a kicker. And this should be right about in his wheelhouse. Uh, inside of uh, 30 yards, he's been... Um, five for five so let's let's see what he's going to be able to do here this kick's going to be what about 18 28 20 yards? i'm pretty sure so ruiz who has 296 career points that ranks sixth among active fbs kickers it's a short distance so it can be blocked got to get this ball up quickly snap is there hold is down ruiz with the kick and it is through the uprights and good, making it a 10-3 lead for Georgia State here in Boone where they have never won. They've never defeated the opponent, Appalachian State. 0-6 all-time against the Mountaineers, but head coach Sean Elliott for Georgia State would like to get a W here at his alma mater. As they go up seven with just 11 seconds on the clock remaining. And you see here the last six meetings between these two teams. I mentioned earlier, typically high scoring. Both of these teams so far this season high scoring. Not necessarily the case today. Not the shootout we might have expected. Well, coming back to your alma mater is always interesting. But coming back and playing the team and all the respect that he has uh, getting a degree at Appalachian State, met his wife at Appalachian State, played for the legendary Jerry Moore, playing against a teammate and a very, very good friend. A lot of emotions, but the most important thing, that, listening to both coaches talk this week, you know, you throw all that out the window when the game starts. At 2.30, you forget that. You try to figure out a way to win, and you put your team in the best position to do so. And you've got to be very impressed with this Georgia State football team so far in this ball game. You saw Stephen Jones on the screen there. He's the one who receives the kick around the two and will return it for App State. Finds some room. Squeaks his way through uh, the coverage side and eventually brought down. That's at the 45-yard line. He'll be marked down at the 44. A great return by Stephen Jones, but time expires in the second quarter. Looking for a hole, looking for a place. At that moment, you think you're going to break, take this to the house. But the Panthers say, no, no, not on our watch. So at halftime here in Boone, Appalachian State hosting Georgia State and trailing by seven. Ten to three, but some deliberation down on the field. I think they're checking the time. Make sure there's maybe one or two seconds left on the, on the game clock. Ruling on the field that the game clock expired during the down. Previous play is under further review. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do is have a look and see if maybe the Mountaineers have a second or two to work with. And if that's the case, Stan, I mean, what do you think? You, you take the shot? You take your, your one second, one you know play what? and take the shot? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. <laughs> It's been very hard for Thomas to get in the comfort zone and throw deep, but I think you do just because you want to try to look for something positive to give you that little energy boost. It's going to be a fiery locker room, I can tell you that. <laughs> you don't need anything <laughs> else to get you motivated, but I think you, you may take that one shot, but you throw it deeper than deep so you don't worry about it being picked, taken to the house. But, you know, I've also seen guys that's After going review, in and take a little bit of a down at the 44 yard line with three seconds remaining on the Looks game like clock. Three seconds First being put back State. on the clock. So I don't guess if you're, t if you're, if, if throwing it to the end zone, the difference between three and one is non existent. No, no. But nonetheless, Appalachian State will get a play. So what you do is you, you you rush three, you drop eight, you drop them as deep as you possibly can to the defenders near about you know, 15, 15, 20 yards away. 
and they're going to drop even quicker. Nothing gets over your head. Dive. A handoff yep. this time to Williams, who gets to the line of scrimmage and is pushed back. So That's no shot the to the half. end zone. And that does it for the first half. 10 to 3, Georgia State over Appalachian State at the break here in Boone. Back with you, it's halftime in Boone where the score is 10 to 3. Georgia State with the lead over Appalachian State, a team they've never beaten before. 6 and 0 in the all-time series are the Mountaineers. As I am joined, I'm Darren Vaught. We kicked Stan out of the booth for just a moment. And I'm joined by Director of Athletics here at Appalachian State, Doug Gillen. Doug, great to see you. Uh, it's great to have, have games and, and have some fans in the stand even, which we'll get to. Uh, you guys recently announced basketball schedules. What's your, your overview, your, just, your snapshot of the world of collegiate athletics as you guys have navigated COVID and, and uh, such a, a, a dynamic world here in 2020? Yeah, certainly dynamic, different um, would probably be the word that comes to mind. You know, uh, you know, every time, you know, we're thankful to have the opportunity to play. We're thankful for the opportunity to have 7% of our fans in. But, you know, on a day like today, in normal circumstances, this is a sold-out game. The energy is a, little, a lot different. Um, but, you know, we're, again, we're, we're, uh, we're thankful to be playing. We're thankful for all the hard work um, our student-athletes and coaches have done to get to this point. And uh, now we just got to play in the second half. Well, you mentioned the fans, 7% capacity, round about 2,100 here at Kid Brewer Stadium today. We see them distanced appropriately, but it's nice to, to hear some people, right? Uh, what goes into determining what 2,100 fans uh, are, are able to sit inside the stadium for a game like today? Yeah, certainly you take capacity and then, you know, you go 7% of that capacity and we, you know, we go off 30,000 and then we just added 1,000 seats up here. So we're at 2,170 today. But, you know, what goes in there, you know, we want to obviously make sure our player parents are taken care of first and foremost, then our students, and then we have a small number of season ticket holders, et cetera, you know, try to spread it out a little bit, get as many people into the rock. I mean, there's so many people that want to be here today. <laughs> like I mentioned, you know, typically we'd be sold out. But it is COVID. We knew it was going to be choppy uh, and going to be a little bit different. But, uh, you know, again, the sun's out. <laughs> the sun's shining <laughs> at Boone. It's a beautiful day. Now we just got to come out and play the second half. That's what I'm saying, man. I, I got to drive. You know I'm based in Raleigh, North Carolina. I got to drive into this area with the mountains, which I love. So it was a, a, a sight to see, a welcoming sight for me for sure. Well, what can you tell me about this north end zone construction that I think today I was told we were the first to really see it in full effect? Yeah, you know, we, we cut the ribbon yesterday. It's a beautiful facility. It's got a 12,000 square foot uh, banquet room on the front. We got 1,070 seats um, with our uh, seating in the end zone. Certainly we had the first floor, state-of-the-art strength and conditioning, state-of-the-art con um, uh, training room, football locker room, football uh, lounge, second floor, football offices, recruiting room, uh, third floor. We're going to have a public-private. We're working on that right now, and we're also having a meeting room on the third floor and then the fourth floor. It's not just for athletics, you know, for um, – our six football games, but that, that banquet facility is desperately needed in the high country and really excited that it's a true multi-purpose facility. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, the patio deck areas over there, that looks like some, some pretty high-class viewing experiences are going to take place here at Kid Brewer Stadium in the near future. Well, Doug, Doug Gillen, Director of Athletics for Appalachian State, thanks for coming up. Thanks for the time, and uh, good luck with everything you've got going on with this athletic season, uh, starting with a second half in which your Mountaineers need to, need to catch up. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Halftime, still a seven-point lead for Georgia State. Welcome back to this presentation of Sunbelt Conference College Football on ESPN+. Plus. Your halftime score, Georgia State 10, Appalachian State 3 here in Boone, North Carolina. The mountainous, picturesque Boone, North Carolina. Darren Vaught and Stan Luter with you. Stan, let's take a look at some of the first half stats. App State having a really hard time moving the ball forward. Whereas Georgia State came out hot, they scored on their first series, managed a field goal before halftime, and they've looked a little bit better. 44 offensive plays for Georgia State equates to 211 yards of total offense. What did we tell you? Get a rhythm, 
and they like to run about 80 plays or halfway there. And the other thing we told you about Georgia State is that they are a very, very stingy run defense. They've only allowed the Mountaineers, a team that averages almost 285 yards of ball game running, only 41. Appalachian State's not been able to convert on third down. They've only had one first down. They've been really dominated, surprisingly, at the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to do a bit better job. If you're a Mountaineer fan, you know that they can play better. You know they will play better. And just something to go home on, just something to think about as we go into this break, Appalachians won 20 of their last 21 games at the Rock. That's worth noting for sure, Stan Luton. We've got more where that came from at halftime here at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina on ESPN+. Plus. Halftime in Boone, 10 to three your score, Georgia State ahead. Let's look at some of the highlights from the first half, beginning with Appalachian State, who despite trailing, has played pretty well defensively. They really have. I mean, you've only given up to 10 points, forced to turn over early in the ball game. Great hustle on the interior of their defense. This is a hard team to pass against. They've had near misses, had nearly fumble recovery. They get one, pressure to the quarterback, Brown. Got to make him uncomfortable. Tip pass there, nearly picked off by Harrington. Under pressure again, a good job that time by Taylor. Puts pressure on quarterback Brown. That time they had a meeting at the quarterback, and that's what you like to see if you're an Appalachian State fan. Again, a solid game by DeMarco Jackson, putting pressure on the quarterback, but not enough. Early in the ball game on the first drive, Brown gets outside the pocket, finds a wide open wide receiver. That's what they do. That's Pinckney. Again, they go inside, they hit you. They come at you so many different ways, and they hit you, and they're burying you. And they hit you, and they're burying you. And they hit you again, bam! And they never get tired of hitting you. Appalachian State, less than 45 yards rushing. That's reason to celebrate. Another big time hit, and you know they even hit each other. They hit you so many times. They like this. <laughs> and then it's just before the half, a big 48-yard run by Greg, and that sets up some things at the end. Tucker Gregg, five carries, 69 yards has been big for Georgia State. That set up the field goal that put them up 10 to three at the break. Just about ready for the start of the second half here in Boone. Appalachian State, the hosts trailing by seven, 10 to three. You see, we've got some some fake fans. Uh, well, maybe maybe not fake is the word. People actually contributed to have those cardboard stiff. stands. They're up. stiff fans. <laughs> they're, they're stiff. They're, they're shocked at what's going on right now. Darren bought Stan Luter with you as we have real fans here as well, 2,100 of them, limited capacity. And you look at the numbers here, Stan, for Appalachian State's leading rushers today. We talked about their season average over 280 yards per game. Georgia State is handling the run game. We put this into some other numbers. Those four running backs, primarily Harrington and Williams, who's out of the ball game, but Williams and Peoples. And I give you these numbers because just to know how good defensively they've, they've played today, Georgia State, that is. 1,200 of the 1,700 yards that Appalachian has gained on the ground this year. Those names that you see across the board have done that. This, this day, they've rushed for less than 50 yards. The Georgia State defense has done a great job, and I'm a little shocked at this because you know what Appalachian State loves to do. They love to run the football. The run game for them begets the passing game. They're not able to find any open receivers. They're not able to run the football. They're in, a different, they're in a difficult situation right now, but I've got confidence that they'll come up with something to figure out a way to win. But don't forget something, too, Karen. Their defense hasn't played bad. They've only given up 10 points. The defense has been has been pretty good. Yeah. Right? I mean, I mean on a up. normal day for an Appalachian State offense, they have a halftime lead having only given up 10 points. So we'll see. They, they open the second half here and will receive the kickoff. Look as at you that. see, the season average. Over 280 yards per game. Third in the country in terms of S FBS programs. As Ruiz kicks it off. And Jones will return for Appalachian State. He had that long one to sort of set them up, although they ran it to run out the clock to end of the first half. And he goes out of bounds. Beginning our second half of play here in the high country. And I'll be very interested right now to see what direction the Mountaineers elect to go. 
Coach Tony Peterson and the offensive coordinator and the offensive staff. Definitely, I think they kind of challenged them a little bit inside the locker room. It would be interesting to hear what happened at halftime. So if we can go between the tackles, run the game. If you run the ball, you're able to throw the football. Heavy run set this time. Quarterback Zach Thomas, the senior, 9 of 14 passing. The play fake. And he'll look downfield, some space to operate, a head fake as he runs toward the sideline and scampers out of bounds after a gain of about six. So that was a run formation for Appalachian State. They throw out of it, which is fine. But again, the quickness of Georgia State going to the football. Thomas looked for his first guy, his second guy had nowhere to go, but the backside once again was open. Is able to pick up about five yards on the play, six, actually seven to be exact. And it's marked a seven-yard gain, so a good start for the Mountaineers. Second and three. Thomas, this time, hands up the middle, as that is Marcus Williams, who gets a couple and within a yard of the first down. Nap stayed in the first half. Three out of nine in third down conversions. Conversely, Georgia State, 7 of 12. And remember, we talked about the number of plays. If you're able to move those chains, you're getting more plays. You're getting a chance to open up your offense. This is a big, I think, early third down conversion. Third and one. The handoff for the Mountaineers goes up the middle. Got it. And they get it and move the chains forward. As it was Williams again who lost his helmet. So Williams will have to go out of the ball game for one play. He'll try to bring in, I think, Peoples. But to just get the feeling that even though they're, they're running it and they made a little something on this first possession of the second half, the passing game may help the run game today. Malik Williams in motion, the fake handoff. Taken by Thomas, shoulders his way out of bounds. And another positive gain for App State's run game. Appalachian gives you a lot of ghost motion. You know, send, send a receiver, send a back out of the backfield all the way across the formation. You make face him. It's a lot of counteraction. You have to be disciplined on the other side of the football. But what it can do is can allow you to get to the outside, make, get to the edge and make some plays. And again, that's a nice play for Thomas on first down. It's time to hand off. To Williams again, who's back in after recovering his helmet. And a shifty Marcus Williams gets across the first down marker. And you see on this play that his helmet came off. He, he did take an incidental knee to the head. Seemed to be okay, obviously, by the first down run after re-entering the contest. First and 10, Thomas another handoff. This time Williams met in the backfield and brought down with vigor. Blake Carroll again on the hit. So many different names this afternoon and we've called Blake Carroll on his fifth tackle of the afternoon. Comes at, reads it, recognizes, responds. They don't mind flexing, do they? They don't mind letting you know who it is either. <laughs> it is a boisterous defensive front to say the least. When they make a play, they let you know. Blake Carroll, one of the leading tacklers for this Panther team. Thomas looking downfield. Tosses a pass right to the 50-yard line where it's caught by Henry Pearson. You see that little bit of hesitation that time? You know, just, just receiver was bumped just off stride that way. Pearson able still to get the ball off. But again, they're doing a nice job. They're recognizing the tight ends are very valuable for Appalachian State and putting some pressure on them. Bump them off the line of scrimmage, bump them as they're going down the field. Now with a third and long. Thomas again met with pressure and nowhere to go. He has to fall courtesy of the sack. It's that man again. <laughs> Jeffrey Clark 
Second sack of the afternoon. They run with a three-man rush. They have a little twist there. They drop the defensive end in the coverage. They were initially trying to look for the, for the tight end across the flat. Nowhere to go. And you've got to eat the football. And again, the dominance so far of the Georgia State defensive front over this Appalachian State front. And it looked as if at the beginning of that drive that Appalachian State had found something with the run game. Instead, they punted away for a touchback. It'll be Georgia State football for the first time this half on the other side on ESPN+. Plus. Back with you in Boone, where, as you see there elsewhere in the Sun Belt Conference, Coastal Carolina with a game postponed today. That means they'll be undefeated for the matchup against the Mountaineers next week. And Stan, we talked about it in the open. Is it possible that the Mountaineers are, are were maybe looking a little too far ahead, well, being surprised I, by Georgia State here? I, I'll tell you more after this play. Brown with the handoff to Coates. And the stingy app run defense continues. You needed a play. You needed a defensive play. You need some excitement. I, I don't. It's human nature for to listen to what people say, but you have to have more discipline and more respect. And no, you can't look ahead. This is a good Georgia State team. I mean, this is the second leading scoring team in the conference. They're one of the top defensive teams in the conference. You can't look past them to get back into the fire. I mean, it's like Christmas. I'm looking forward to Christmas, but I'm not in a big hurry to get there. <laughs> we still got Thanksgiving. Yes, still right? got Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be looking ahead. Brown with another handoff and another hit in the backfield. Appalachian State is on fire defensively here, and they're showing some of that same kind of energy that we've seen out of Georgia State when the Panthers defenders make big well, plays. Well, I think maybe Dale Jones, the defensive coordinator for the Mountaineers, may have had a word with his team as well. He said, you know, you're giving up 10 points. That might be 10 too many. I need somebody to make a play. Very inspired defense on the first two plays, but they've had success. Georgia State on third down, 7-12 to 12 in the first half can the Mountaineers stop them now third and long right around 11 yards to go for the Panthers and the last two plays one guy DeMarco Jackson's been involved in a lot of that chaos let's see if they bring him on a blitz to drop in coverage quad Brown trip pocket collapses on him he tried to slip out but as you said Got his right foot caught on it. I think even his own blocker as he fell to the ground. Well, I'm going to give the early credit to Demetrius Taylor, number nine. Let's see if it's his leg or if it's a teammate that, that Quad Brown trips over. Yeah, he does trip over his teammate, his offensive tackle, Gilmore. But again, I mean, Bass, I should say. But yeah, but that was pressure. Pressure up the middle, not allowing your quarterback to get to the outside. A good defensive stance by the Mountaineers. That's one way to do it for a third down stop as the punt. Bounces right around midfield, downed by Georgia State. And a big opportunity for the Mountaineers of App State on the other side with 8.45 to play in the third here on ESPN+. Back with you in Boone, Darren Vaught, Stan Luter, and Stan in the open, we said, you know, something was going to have to give, right? This great rush defense by Georgia State so far this season, 25th in all of FBS, and then the great rushing attack by Appalachian State tops in the Sun Belt Conference. One is playing out in favor of Georgia State, the other vastly at the disadvantage of Appalachian State. The Mountaineers here with a first down and a handoff to Cameron Peoples who finds some space in the second portion of the defense. Drops his way forward for a gain of eight. But you, you like a game like this if you don't have a rooting interest, <laughs> let me say it like that. <laughs> because what you're seeing is you're seeing strength on strength. And, and, and sometimes, okay, hey, who's just going to be the better person on that particular play? I mean, and it, all football is is winning your one-on-one -on -one battle. Thomas on second down, another give in the backfield. Peoples again got near the first down marker, but it looks like it's going to be spotted about a yard short. And ultimately leads to another you, third down. You get the feeling you're going to get a strong dose of inside runs by Peoples and, and, and then also Williams when he's back in the football game. Again, you know, the philosophy for the Mountaineers, and, and if, if we're talking to Coach Clark right now, I said, Coach, are you going to run this ball up the gut or off tackle? I said, yeah, because if we can't pick up two yards or three yards right now, we're not going to win this game. We don't deserve to win it. 
There you go. Third and short. Thomas keeps it himself and gets a couple of yards past the marker. So a third down conversion. That's progress for Appalachian State offensive. Little quarterback lead where you get a first down, you keep the football, you can you move, and you get plenty of, plenty of time. 7.20 on a moving clock, and you still got another quarter. What you don't want to do is to is if you get in the red zone to come up empty. What you don't want to do is to make any mistakes right now. This is when Appalachian State's got to have their best football. Thomas with some directions from the sideline. Another play fake to Peoples, looking downfield. Heaves it down to Malik, and it's intercepted. Wow, he was double covered, but the defender went up and got it. That's Antavius Lane, the strong safety. I'm really shocked at this. This is a complete misread. When, when Thomas, made, right there, when he makes the fake, He's looking down. The reason he hesitates, he sees the double coverage. But he thought the receiver was going to be able to run his way or he could throw uh, Christian, I mean, Williams all the way open. And Tavius Lane does a really good job of keeping inside leverage. There's a flag on the play here. And I think this is going to be post-interception. There's no foul on That's the play. when it came out. Ruling on the field is an interception in the end zone for a touchback. First down. Either way, it's a first down. I couldn't quite make out I couldn't what Marshall either. Lewis was saying. It was a personal foul. I couldn't exactly hear him. It may have been on the receiver, which could tell. Couldn't hear him, but nevertheless, touchback. And, and the bottom line is, what did I just finish saying? You can't have the turnover. And that was one where it was coverage all the way on the first read, coverage on the last read, interception. Great job by Antavius Lane. Another redshirt freshman coming up big as Lane gets the takeaway and a handoff up the middle. Talking to my buddy Sam Crenshaw, used to work in TV in this area for many years now down in Atlanta and one of the voices of Georgia State football. I said, Crenshaw, tell me about He said, you know Hitstick, don't you? Said, Who? Hitstick? Yeah, Hitstick, Antavius Lane. So <laughs> Crenshaw, I give him some credit for something every now and then. Showing off the hands that time. <laughs> as it's Brown with a rush up the middle, and we received confirmation the flag after the interception was waved off is okay. what it was. So okay. it was an interception into the end zone, touchback, which is why Georgia State started at their own 20. I wasn't sure if somebody said something or it was a push away from the play. Another third down, though. You gotta stop right now for Appalachian. You're in good field position. Brown with some pressure, finds his man for the first down, and that is completed to a wide open Sam Pinckney, just his second catch so far today. The they other, put, of course, was that. They put touchdown. pressure on Brown up the middle. He kind of hesitates just a little bit, but he finds a soft spot in the zone. And you see Harrington looking around and say, wow, we were just so close and couldn't make it. He, along with Sean Jolly, finding it between the linebacker, the defensive back, and the chains continue to move for the Panthers of Georgia State. This time, a screen with the motion hurtling. A defender and tackled right around the line of scrimmage is Pinckney again. And you notice once they got away from their doorstep on the goal line, now they begin to open up the offense a little bit, a little faster tempo, going no huddle, going with three or four wide receivers in the set. And you've got this guy, number 17, Coates. It's always dangerous when he's in one-on-one -on -one or in open field. Brown gives to Coates. A lot of space over there toward the sideline. He gets the first down and then is pushed out of bounds at midfield. You're on a tear. Well, no, you can <laughs> see it. You can see what they're doing. They're, they're going with four wides. That spreads, that gets the guy out of the box. That makes you have to win your battle at the line of scrimmage. And you're getting a guy like a, 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 a Coates or a Greg on the last play a few moments ago, a chance to win, meet one guy, and pick up 10 to 12 yards. Pressure in the backfield. Brown has it knocked away. Haven't seen the signal. No signal. So as far as we know, it's a fumble that's recovered by Georgia State. And it must be a fumble because the clock didn't start. But usually when you see a, a change of possession like that, they'll toss the bean bag. So the clock is ticking. It's a fumble, it's a fumble by recovery. Brown on the pass attempt, but he hadn't started to move his hand forward. And again, more pressure 
by the Appalachian State interior. We're talking a lot about Trey Cobbs and DeMarco Johnson. Those inside linebackers are making plays. Claude Brown on second and long. Goes up the middle that time, but it's knocked away. Good defensive play there again by a player in the App State defensive backfield, and now we've got an injured player. I think that may be Ryan Huff, and I'd like to look at that one more time. Not sure if he got there a little too soon or not. Ball comes there. Time out for an injured player. Time out on Huff the field. rolled over on his shoulder, and we'll take a break. Back in Boone following the injury to free safety Ryan Huff for Appalachian State. He did, in fact, it looked like he rolled over on his shoulder awkwardly. So he is being attended to and is out of the game for the Mountaineers, but a third and 15 and, for and, Georgia State. And you State. just wonder now how much pressure will they try to dial up and put those wide receivers in man coverage. Looks like they're showing some pressure and dropping out of it. Brown checked the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. And Brown. Nicholas Ross. Yeah. Hands off to Coates, and he tries up the middle, gets about halfway to the first down marker. Ross was coming in in a nickel package. I mean, it's obvious long, long pass situation, but again, it's similar to what you had earlier. You run a couple of plays, you run a third down play to maybe set up something for fourth down. So now fourth down in about uh, five or six. Manageable could be a quick kick out of this as well. They they are known for tricks. Fifteen on the play clock. Brown getting some direction from the sideline. Backs up even. That's a long shotgun snap, and he punts it away. How about that? And bounces inside the twenty yard line. So App State will take over. Right around the 18-yard line, according to the signal. That's not, not, not a bad that's, job that's a, ex, them. that's a great decision, and, and i tell you why. One, you don't have a turnover. And what they're saying is that Georgia State's defense, they're telling Appalachian, you can't run on us. So you're going to have to be one-dimensional and throw the football, and we feel like we can cover that. Try to pin them deep and make this a game of field position. 320 now in the third quarter. Mountaineers 30 carries for 68 yards so far today. That is held up for Georgia State as the first play from scrimmage on this drive, a handoff up the middle, and four, five players in white driving back the ball carrier after a gain of a few. Victor Haywood, Chris Moore, the transfer from UVA, Carroll, 42. We've called their names a lot this afternoon. It is a stout defensive front for Georgia State. As Zach Thomas receives the snap, goes toward the sideline, caught and brought down immediately, but a first down. Excellent play call that time. Roll, half roll, gives Thomas an opportunity to see over the defense, get rid of the football, runs about an eight or nine yard route, get to the sticks, get the first down, keep things moving. I, li I like the call. Give him an opportunity to make a play. That's the redshirt freshman Christian Wells with the catch. He had two scores against Arkansas State as App State goes with another handoff up the middle and a gain of about one. Freshman Noel getting the handoff. We mentioned earlier that Daytrick Harrington, the team's leading rusher, out of action today for Appalachian State, but not, not much of an excuse, or they wouldn't like for that to be an excuse for their rushing game's woes as they've got plenty of other capable guys. We got man-to-man -to, -man to the outside, but a deep safety all the way back. Got to be aware of him. That's more. Thomas, the play fake. Plenty of time. Airs it out deep. Malik Williams with the catch. It was just a hair behind him, so he's held up and tackled, but he's inside the 10. Williams, one of the speedsters on this team. Great recognition. He has some time and throw it as far as you can and run. They're in man coverage, and we mentioned that a moment ago at the snap. Man, send him down the seam. That time, the hit stick couldn't make the play. It sets up first down from the 10 for App State. Thomas gives to Williams. 
Nothing doing left side. Tries up the middle. Not much there either. Great call a moment ago by Appalachian. You feel like if you can get the matchups you want, you've got to try to take a shot. That time, Thomas had the opportunity, had some time, could throw it deep. He got an outstanding speech for making a play. Appalachian stayed in the red zone. But again, you go back to things that coaching staff said. We've got to be able to finish in the red zone. Appalachians had some problems this season. Remember, early in the year, they had a fumble at the goal line against UNC Charlotte. They had a fumble against Marshall. Play fake. And a toss to Pearson, the tight end. Leaps for the pylon and got there. The call is touchdown. Appalachian State, what a play. The value of your tight ends. Short yard situation, sneak, Pearson to the side. Solid pass. Mountaineers on the board. App State trying to get those tight ends involved, and it's worked at points. We saw Miller Gibbs make a similar dive toward a first down marker earlier. He was unsuccessful, but Pearson, as the call on the field, able to get the pylon, stay in bounds, and get the touchdown for the Mountaineers, and now on to the extra point to potentially tie it. Snap down, Staten's kick is up and through, so we're tied at 10 points apiece here in Boone. And here's another look. Yeah, and watch this. You see Pearson was the H back. He showed block, and then he ran him out. This is a very similar play to what they used last week successfully for a touchdown for Gibbs. Again, throws him there, gets that. It's an easy pass. It's a three or three-yard pass. You've got to make sure that you take into account the tight end blocking and let him go. He's a free release. And it's a good boom. Execution there. Fake the dog. Gets inside. Leaps and gets the pylon. Once you touch the pylon, touchdown. And they're happy in Boone again. That is a tremendous athletic effort by Henry Pearson, who gets his first score of the season. It's his third career touchdown. And he ties it up for his Mountaineers, who will kick it away to Georgia State. You know when you've got all those guys stacked in the box, sometimes just seeking somebody out the backside gives you some success. Marcus Williams did a really nice job of carrying out the fake. Pearson does the rest. And now, now the pressure shifts to Georgia State. Because even though they, we've talked about their defense, this is an offense that's number two in the conference, averaging a shade under 37 points a ball game. They haven't been on the board. They haven't scored in a long time. Well, yeah, and you see there Cornelius Brown, their quarterback, has been sensational in certain performances. The reigning player of the week in the conference had four total scores, three passing, one rushing, only one touchdown today in less than 50% completion percentage. Brown with the play fake on first down. Heaves it up the middle, and it's well overthrown. Gibson again, his intended target. It's a little high, and he threw that a little bit off his back foot. Gangly guy, 6'5", about 200 pounds. Got some experience last year. In fact, played, played some valuable minutes in the game against uh, Appalachian down in Atlanta. But he is the guy, he's the leader, and they feel like he's got a tremendous, an absolute tremendous upside. Dixon in motion. This time the handoff goes up the middle to Tucker Gregg. It was a real difference maker for Georgia State in the first half, including a long run of 48 yards. He gets a couple there. Let's see if Georgia State tries to play the numbers game. 20 seconds on game clock in the quarter and about 25 right now, 15 and 25 on the, on the play clock. Do you wait? Let the clock expire, let the quarter in, and then come back and have your third long situation to begin the fourth quarter. And they're going to let the clock expire and head to the fourth quarter. We'll begin it with a third down for Georgia State. Here back with you on Heroes Day here at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone as you see App State donning the stars and stripes inside their helmet logos with Veterans Day earlier in the week. And, of course, 
sending our thanks to veterans and first responders everywhere as we begin the fourth quarter. All knotted up, 10 points apiece. Darren Vaught, Stan Luter with you. And a third down for Georgia State. Cornelius Brown receives the snap, chucks it down the sideline, and it is caught by his man. What a play by Sam Pinckney. Just a few receptions so far today, but each one of them has been big. You talk about those 50-50 balls. This was a situation where Pinckney just goes up at the last moment and grabs it. He's a 6'4", 210-pound receiver. You see Jolly's just waiting, waiting for the ball to come in his hands, and Pinckney goes up and grabs it and keeps the drive alive. A huge play for Georgia State to start the fourth quarter. And then Tucker Craig on the end around, running it toward the far sideline, as you saw. He had his legs taken out from under him by Sean Jolly of App State, but after gaining eight yards. Panthers moving quickly. Brown, the fake handoff, goes up the middle himself and falls to the ground and, after getting the first. And you really don't understand how difficult a play that was because at the end of the play, Pinckney did something really special for receivers. He didn't show his hands. He didn't show his hands until the last minute. Then he just went up in the air and grabbed it. Jolly was kind of sitting back, waiting for the ball to come. It's kind of a basketball play. Step and meet the pass, go out and get it early. Jolly didn't go after it. Pinckney does with the height advantage, first down. Hand off to Greg. It goes up the middle, right around where Elijah Dirasuba just checked in for App State, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dirasuba, another one of those hardworking young guys, just comes in, tries to cause some chaos. And now you got to feel like you're in the range of Ruiz for Georgia State to get three on the board, but they're thinking six. Another personnel change. Three by one formation. DeAndre Dingle prints in as Brown drops back and looks again for his tight end, Roger Carter, but overthrew him in the end zone. And that's the variety they have in their offense and the value of a Roger Carter. They had him lined up on the, on the uh, hash mark, and he goes down the field and just doesn't make a little move, and that ball just a bit overthrown. That could have been six, but the versatility and using a guy like a Carter as a tight end or as a wide receiver or as a slot back, big value there. Now can the Mountaineer defense step up one more time? Georgia State, nine for 16 on third downs today. Third and long. Brown talking with his offensive line. Shifts Greg to the opposite side. Three by one again. Gives to Greg. Not enough blocking there. He got past the original line of scrimmage, but it brings up fourth down right around the 15-yard line. It's a good safe play for Georgia State. You don't want to take yourself out of field goal range. You don't want to give yourself a longer field goal. You go three by wide, three by one. Maybe you can get somebody underneath or beat their man in man coverage, but also it gives your wide receiver or your running back an opportunity to try to find a hole. If you can break one, you do, but if you don't, you live to fight another battle. Sets up a field goal attempt of about 32 yards for Noel Ruiz. One for one so far today. The kick is up and sails through the uprights. Good to give Georgia State the lead once more. 13 to 10 in Boone here in the fourth quarter on ESPN+. A Noel Ruiz 32-yard field goal caps off the drive, as you see it spelled out for Georgia State there, giving them the lead in the fourth quarter, 13 to 10. This one has been a grind it out type of football game thus far. And Ruiz will be the one to kick it off to App State. Stephen Jones, the deep man to return. Receives it inside the five and will bring it out. Down the sideline, finds a hole and is eventually shoved away just past the 30. A lot of collisions on that play. Jones took one out of bounds. Down the field blocking guys are knocked out of bounds. Two or three things, bodies flowing over, you know, on the sideline. A lot of things going on, battling right now. 12-23. 
Georgia State, three and three on the season, three and two in conference play. Appalachian State, five and one. Yeah, and, and the run game improving for the Mountaineers, although still not great comparatively, right? They normally average over 280 yards per game. 33 rushing yards in the quarter for the third, which is a, a bit better than they've been doing. They'll hope to improve on that here. Zach Thomas with the handoff. Goes up the middle for a short game. Three yards, he gets it to the 35, does Marcus Williams. Five games of the six they played this year. They've rushed for well over 200 yards this season, okay? The one game that they didn't uh, rush for over 200 yards was the 96 yards they rushed for against Marshall. That game didn't turn out well for the Mountaineers. That's their only loss of the season so far. As this game, they've struggled. They don't even have a 25-yard rusher total for the game. A few close. And a timeout called. Bit of confusion. Thomas was looking back and forth toward the sideline. And we'll take a timeout with them here on ESPN Plus. We're in Boone. It's 13 to 10. Georgia First State timeout with the lead of the State. Timeout on the field. Back following the App State timeout, the Mountaineers hosting, trailing by three, but with the football in the fourth quarter here. Second down for the Mountaineers offense, which has been a bit clunky today, as we've discussed it at various points. There was some confusion prior to the timeout needing to be taken. And now Zach Thomas as everybody on the same page breaks the First time up. we've seen this, three by one for Appalachian State. Hennigan's in the slot. Quick pass out wide. Caught. Wow. And it'll be because of forward motion, a gain of two or three or even close to five look is where how, the archer's going to go. Look how quick Quavian White responds to this. Quick out. He's not even able a chance to take a step, and that's a great form tackle. And if he stops you, he's got a feeling, hey, I've got some teammates coming to help me bring him down. That's a big-time tackle by number 20, White, for Georgia State. Gain of five for Jalen Virgil, just his second catch of the day. This time a handoff gets back to the line of scrimmage on third down. And now we're getting into an interesting territory, Stan, where you're you're close to midfield, fourth down. Punt it, punt it. Let's say I'll save you all the drama right now. Punt it, <laughs> punt it. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Because remember, your defense is playing pretty well. They've only given up 13 points. Don't gamble. Take yourself out of it. You've had a hard time trying to score the football. Let's play the field position game and feel like you're going to make a play. Xavier Sabach sends it up. It's received by White around the 20, and he's wrapped up and brought down inside of that. Georgia State will begin the possession at the 17-yard line. On the other side, they lead it 13 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Kid Brewer Stadium, the site of this tight one in the fourth quarter between Georgia State and App State. Darren Vaught, Stan Luter with you. Stan, what do you think of those mountain houses there? I, I love them. I mean, and I, I have a nice I, view of the field. Hey, you could. I, absolutely. Great TV reception, I know. I would <laughs> love to stay in there, provided it's got great heat. <laughs> That's why I got heat. I'm there. <laughs> Starting to get a little bit of a chill in the air in Boone, North Carolina, as Georgia State hands off to Tucker Gregg for a short gain. Looks like he's going to be given two yards on the first down carry. You try to go inside out with a Tucker Gregg, a guy that gets those hard, tough yards inside. And if you're Appalachian State now, this is a time you've got to be a sure tackler. You know, if you can get a strip, great, but you've got to get the guy to the ground. Now every, every snap of the football is more and more valuable if you're Georgia State. Brown, the play fake to Greg. He has him on the wheel route, looking downfield the entire way. And again, he wanted Carter the tight end, but a great play catching up by Caden Smith. Too much time to throw the football, but great recovery by Caden Smith. We talked about a few moments ago the great play that the, uh, the uh, White made for Georgia State. This is an equally great defensive play. 
Caden Smith closing in, waits for the last second. You've got that tight end sneaking down the field, down the seam. And Caden Smith gets in and makes a deflection. Big time defensive play by the Mountaineers. That's a big matchup, a fun matchup. Senior versus senior down the field in a big moment. And it brings up third down and eight for Georgia State. But look how quickly Carter got down the field from a tight spot. This is huge. Brown looking up the middle again. He wants Carter again. Right into his arms, it seemed, but it drops to the grass and is incomplete. What a great matchup. What great coverage once again. And we've talked about this young man all afternoon. Marco Johnson and Watts Johnson matched up with the tight end, goes stride for stride. That's a ball Carter wishes he could have all over again. But at the last second, you see Jackson kind of get his hand in there and knock it away or hit his elbow. Two big plays defensively, the last two plays for Appalachian State. Ooh. High snap, Michael Hayes to punt it. It's low, end over end, so a wacky bounce. Let's it dribble inside the 25 where Georgia State will down it at the 23 of App State, and they trail by three. You know, you, you gave up some yardage that time on the kick return, but I like the fact that you didn't try to gamble, try to make the play, and you fumble or something. You know, they give up about 10 or 12 yards. They can get that back. A turnover is hard to give up right now. There you see a reminder. This is the seventh meeting of all time. Georgia State with every ticking second getting closer potentially to winning their first ever game against Appalachian State. But the Mountaineers offense, I'm sure something to say about that. Here with nine and a half to play. Thomas the fake handoff. Plenty of room in the pocket. He bounces out of it to the 35 and leaps out of bounds. He'll be down at the 37-yard line. Of the Good best, scramble from yeah, the first Yeah, the best running game that the Appalachian State's had this <laughs> afternoon has been the backside running of their quarterback. And again, nothing downfield. First look was taken away. Second look was there. You know the backside's probably going to be there. And alertly takes it, picks up about 15 yards, keeps those chains moving for the Mountaineers. Thomas, the leading rusher for App State today. He's now got 39 yards on the ground. Hands it off. Virgil sheds a tackler in the backfield and can't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a couple. If you're watching this football game and you're just a neutral observer, you don't, you're not cheering for any team, one thing you've seen is a lot of white in the backfield. They, they have done a really good job, that of Georgia State, of controlling the line of scrimmage this afternoon. And we're looking at those numbers, and they've got a guy in Strawn that, that's led the team in tackles for loss. But they've got, I think, about 18 guys that have had at least one tackle behind the line of scrimmage or tackle for loss this season. And the medical staff looking at Trey John Stevens McQueen, the senior inside linebacker from Charlotte, North yeah, Carolina. He's a local guy. You know, he's glad to be home. Preseason all-conference in the Sun Belt. Fourth all-time on the Georgia State Take a look list. at the end of the play. Keep your eye on number six. Bam and bam. He, shoulder versus head. And he stumbled toward the end there. Thought he was going to be able to get up to his feet. He'll get looked at on the sideline and exit competition for now. Second and long for App State. Play fake, Thomas rolls out on the run. Gives up the middle. Pass caught by Miller, Gibbs. And then some, the first down achieved and he somehow got into Panthers territory. Watch Miller Gibbs at the end of the play. He's right at the line to gain the initial contact, watch this, but lowers his head, bam, keeps those legs turning, moving, grooving, first down. That's excellent balance on the catch and turn. He used, you saw his right hand to keep his body upward. Now Thomas, another play action, this time trying to roll out. And nowhere to go. Goes out of bounds. You hear some ooze out of the crowd. They want a late hit on their quarterback. And Thomas is getting up very, very slow. And I'm not certain if he's not getting up at all. 
certainly. I'm not sure if, what I'm saying. When he when he was hit, if his leg didn't get caught in that the mess, the the the, yeah, the, 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 the tarp, the tarp that they used there. to tie, yeah. alignment tarp. Huseman will come in. Yeah, you see Jacob Huseman, the senior of Bradenton, Florida, played against two opponents in 2018. So now Huseman will take the snap. Motions Peoples out of the backfield. Gives him on the bubble screen. Cuts up the middle. Peoples near a first down. He'll come up a yard short, but a great play. Okay, let's go back to this play one more time. Nowhere to go. Goes to the outside. Gets a block. And here's a late hit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right in the white. But see the hit, and then he goes into the, the stuff. Okay, and, and yeah, they've got every reason to want a late hit on that play. But I have yet to see Thomas get up. I'm keeping my eyes on that and almost miss Huseman's pass. We'll keep you alerted. He's still on the ground as Huseman hands off up the middle again. I started to mention Huseman's experience. Two games he saw action in 2018, five games last year. And it seems like they're looking at Thomas's hip over here on the sideline. And again, like we said, he's still on top of that, that, that tarp, meshy surface. And they use it to get everybody's alignment. You see it on, on every team's sideline. And there you see them checking out Zach Thomas, the senior quarterback for App State. While we get the change out to measure potentially for an App State first down, and it looks like they're going to get it. So now if you're Huseman, you, you know it's going to be the short passing game, if anything. Don't, don't try to be the hero right now. Just run your offense. He's a veteran. He understands what's got to do. You've got to get over right now the shock that your quarterback, your leader is out of the ball game. Doesn't look too good right now for that. But for now, you've got to worry about what's going on on the football field, and the hands are in Jacob Huseman, the senior. It's a first and 10 for the Mountaineers. Be very interested to hear the explanation of the non-late hit at the end of this ball game. Huseman hands to Peoples again. A short game before he's swallowed up at the hash mark. What you've got to do if you're Appalachian State now is you've got to refocus. You've got to recenter your energy. They're going to take care of your quarterback. Yeah, you're mad about the hit now, but you've got to go out and execute second down and long. Receives the snap, fakes the handoff this time. Nearly no time to throw, but almost gets it to Malik Williams, though he overthrew him on the out route. Pressure on the inside, good cover to the outside. Williams nearly able to make the call, to make the catch. And now, if you're App State, you're in a dilemma. It's third down, third and about eight. I think right now with, with 554, this is two down, two play territory. I don't think you punt. You've got to try to get the first down, keep the chains moving. Six for 14 on third downs today, but this is Huseman's first, obviously. Eight to gain for the first. Protection is there. Huseman gives up the middle. It's Hennigan with the catch, the first down, and he shuffles his feet inside the hash mark to get a little bit extra. Big time throw by Huseman. Steps in, knows he's going to get contact, knows he's going to get hit, but the leading receiver, the steady guy, comes up with the big catch that time by Thomas Hennigan. It's his second catch of the day. He hasn't been that involved as first and 10 from the 22. And Huseman walks up to the line of scrimmage. Another handoff, Peoples. A big gap up the middle. Finds his way near the 10 as he's brought down. And that's another App State first down. 
you have to execute right now if you're Appalachian State. And now for Georgia State, you've been a tough, stifling, aggressive ground game defense this entire football game. Right now is not the time to let down. A little fussing and fighting right now, a little pushing and shoving. That's okay, it's football. I mean, in a tight game like this, <laughs> I would expect no State. less this will be a 30 second timeout. entering huddles for the timeout called by Georgia State. That's their first of the second half. So two timeouts remaining for both teams. And it's easy if you're an Appalachian State fan now to, to get distracted for a few moments because you, you know, your quarterback is down. And as soon as we know something, you'll know something. But you've got to now lock in and find some plays, and it's going to be a shortened series of things. What are the plays that Huseman are most comfortable for? Roll him out half pocket like we've seen Thomas. Understand it's, it can't be late, you know, long developing plays. You're not going to give him an opportunity to read defense and coverages. You're in the red zone area, so it's got to be simple thing. It's power. It's some misdirection counter plays. Try to see if you can get somebody in some, you know, in some jet jet motion maybe. But it's got to be ways to execute and make it smooth, for lack of a better term. You know, not a lot of gimmickry right now. If, if nothing else for Appalachian State, you get the field goal. Huseman back in after the timeout. First and goal from the 10. Gives Peoples wide open space up the middle. And he falls into the end zone. Cam Peoples with the touchdown. And he makes it 16 to 13, App State. The biggest and best hole all night long came on that particular play, and Peoples finds a happy zone. When, you, when we get a chance to look at this again, watch the offensive line, the surge, and we talk about them all year long, but Hannah and then Newsel and Garrison, they, they did the job that particular time. 51, Hunter. Hardy, 74. And Staten's extra point attempt is up and in. That makes App State leaders by four. Watch the surge there. You see that block right there? The block down by Hardy. Clears the hole. Peoples, you could have run through that hole right there. Watch this. <laughs> bam, bam, hat on a hat. 74 gets the kick in. There it is. Too late. Touchdown, Mountaineers. His fourth touchdown score of the season, and it gives the Mountaineers the lead in the fourth, just under five minutes remaining. A big catch by Thomas Hennigan following the entry of backup quarterback Jacob Huseman, a big part of this series as well. And, and this is a team in Georgia State that's been here before. They've lost three ball games. They really consider it two because they were never, never, ever in the Coastal Carolina game. But there are other two games they lost by seven and three points respectively. One of those games being the overtime. So they have played some close ball games. Let's see if this time they can find a way to win it. Riker Casey's kick, fair catch. And it'll be a touchback to Georgia State will begin on their own 25, but there's a scuffle inside of that. Several players getting into shoving matches. You see some helmets removed on the outskirts. Good bit of officiating. I love it. The coaches are out. And the, and the reason I say good bit of officiating on this play, there's no flags that have been thrown to my, that I've seen. They're going to talk about this thing. But a penalty is going to be huge, whichever team is the culprit. Penalty right now against Georgia State pushes them back 15. Half this is the goal. Penalty against Appalachian gives Georgia State 455 and two timeouts and gives them about 15 yards in advance. They'll move that ball out to the 40. And as you said, both coaches out here, the yes. players that got back to the sideline, waving their arms up into the air, revving up these 2,100 or so fans. Well, Coach Clark is still upset about the late hit on their quarterback, Thomas, a few minutes ago. So, you know, he's fired up. But he goes out and gets his guys in the cooler heads. And both coaches, Coach Clark and Coach Elliott. And you see Thomas being carted away. So he was moving his legs when he was down on the ground. You just hope it's nothing so severe 
But you never like to see the cart come out. We will find out as soon as we know something. Joey Jones and Brett Trelo, the, the SIDs are the best at the business along with Allison George down at uh, Georgia State. But uh, Brett and Joey will let us know and we'll let you know. And, and, and our thoughts and prayers right now are going to, to Zach Thomas. And that's all I can say about it. That's all I know. So that's it. But I know, I know Brett and Joey will tell us because they're good guys. And, and, and a lot of people in Mountaineer land are, are wondering and waiting and hoping and praying. From the 25, a first and 10. The pass tipped up and nearly picked off. The Mountaineers almost had a humongous Who was takeaway it? Who there. was it? Guy we've talked about all afternoon, Mr. Jackson. Drops in coverage. Brown under pressure coming right at you. Gets a hand on it. Gets another hand on it. Oh. But wasn't able to grab it. But, they, you got to love that. Love the effort. He has had one heck of a ball game tonight. He had even fingertips of two separate hands on that last attempt there. The pitch to Coates, and he runs out of bounds after a gain of one. You look at big plays. If, if Appalachian State's able to hold him on this drive, you mark that down as another one of those big plays that help you win ball games. Georgia State had one earlier in the game, early in this minute when he had the deep pass uh, to, to Pinckney. Boom, now third down. Do you bring pressure? Always a threat of a quarterback running the football. A big third down. Georgia State trailing. Empty. Brown looking downfield, goes up the middle, and it's broken up. Play made by Trey Cobb, but there's a flag. Now they're going to say he got there early. Rush three dropped in the deep zone. Remember, it was a third down and nine. Pass interference. Defense, number seven. By rule, the ball wow. replaced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Automatic first down as is signaled by referee Marshall Lewis there. That is a big break for Georgia State. And my first look, you're watching a lot of things, and I, I didn't think it was pass interference. But that, again, that's one quick view. I'd like to look at that again, and, and we maybe can take. But nevertheless, doesn't matter what I see. Here's what they did, first and 10 for Georgia State. Fake handoff to Coates, and the pocket collapses. Brown had nowhere to go. And Brown was there. There was a receiver in the area deep enough, but the play took so long and good coverage. And again, Demetrius Taylor, who's had three sacks on the season. They talk about his, how valuable he is to that front line. Comes up along with Hampton, who's had a solid ball game and makes the sack on Brown. It's a loss of seven, second and 17. Brown going down the sideline, and the pass is incomplete. As Sean Jolly there on the defense. For the Mountaineers, looked to be pretty decent placement on the pass, but Destin Coates coming out of the backfield. Okay, you've got good cover corners for Appalachian State. We know that Georgia State's got some explosive wide receivers and tight ends that can get down the field. Does Dale Jones decide to roll the dice and put an extra man, put a little more pressure on it? They're going to rush forward this time. On third, Brown goes up the middle. Again, it's knocked away. Sean Jolly to make the play for the Mountaineers. Flag on the play. I'm thinking late hit, roughing the quarterback. It seems as if it would be back toward the backfield. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 75. Okay. Uh, okay. Real to play is an incomplete pass, fourth down. So it remains fourth and long, very long for Georgia State. I think they said it was on um, Gilmore. Yeah, Gilmore 75 with the face mask. Same equation as if it had been a hole, so. Again, you punt it, you ask your defense to hold them, but a good defensive stand that time by the Mountaineers. 
Jolly and John Charles, who have been the anchors of the defensive secondary for the last couple of seasons, make the big plays along with the pressure. Michael Hayes, another low spinning punt, that high hop, favors Georgia State. As Malik Williams lets it roll back to the 26, 25-ish is where it's down. And that's where the Mountaineers will begin their next possession. Okay, let's play the time game. I think if you're if you're Appalachian State, obviously you've got to keep the chains moving, keep the clock moving. Houston's had a chance now to kind of settle in. He's going to run the show. He's going to take you home. You get the ball into your outstanding running backs. You get the ball in their hands. You let them make plays. 72 yards in the second half. Not great, but much better than that 41. The swing soft passes. My question, though, is if you're Georgia State, how soon do you use your timeouts if you can get the stop? It's a good question. A couple of timeouts remaining for each team is the first play from scrimmage. A handoff for the Mountaineers as Cameron Peoples gets about halfway to the first down marker and just past the 30. And some extra whistles at the end of the play. Perhaps to break up some extracurricular activity. Well, if you're Appalachian State right now, you get a good look at Hardy who had that key block a moment ago. You want to keep the clock moving. You want to get off the football, and they feel like they found something in the last couple possessions. They're aided by a penalty, it appears. Well, there was a flag down. It was picked up. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number six. 15 yard penalty. And a face mask against the defense is the call, so it moves it down even further even for App State. Came off during the play. Ball now spotted at the 46 of the Mountaineers. Wasn't able to pick up the number. I think it might have been on Stevens This will be a 30-second timeout. That's what I heard as well, I, number I thought, six. Yeah. And now Georgia State is going to take their second timeout of the second half with 325 left here. And, Stan, I think your point stands in, in reference to the time game. You want to run out the clock. The running game has not been as effective as you would like it to be in order to do so. But if Georgia State's going to help you out with a penalty here or there, but yeah, that, that, that the, the play would have given you about five or six yards for the Mountaineers. So you got to think that they wouldn't have started the next play until about maybe two, two fifty, middle left. See the middle of the screen. Keep your eye on number six. It wasn't on the ball carry. They're right there. Watch there. Okay, so. The, at the play right there is six on 74 Hardy. He watched the ball. It wasn't there. Ripped his helmet off even. But nevertheless. Now Huseman, another give. Peoples bottled up. Now, if Georgia State elects to call their timeout, which it looks like they're going to do. Now Appalachian State. State's got to protect the football, timeout. get off the football, your offensive lineman, protect it, and get, you need one more first down. No timeouts remaining for the Panthers. Right, as that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. You need, you need to get this first down. If you pass the ball, it's got to be, I, I think, you know, I think right now it's got to be something very, a safe pass. Useman on that first series in which he replaced Zach Thomas. Two for three passing for 26 yards. But, but I'll be very honest with you. I, I, as explosive as Georgia State's offense has been, I, I don't know that I throw the football at all. I, I really don't. They may. But the most, the most important thing is, is right now the clock. And one of first down. Another give. Cam Peoples up the middle, galloping his way over a couple of defenders, through some, and pushing his way to about an eight-yard gain. But that's Coming okay. Up about a yard. That's short. okay because the play clock started at 3:06. Okay, that's that's fine. That's that's fine for Appalachian State purposes. Okay, for Georgia State, it's not because they're going to milk every second of this. Now under three minutes to play. And if you don't get, you got to think quarterback sneak or some type of dive with the running back. But if you don't get it, if you're the Mountaineers, then you certainly try to get it on fourth down. But that clock continues to move. They won't, start, they won't snap this ball until about 
2.30 maybe. That's even less than that. Shot clock down, or excuse me, the play clock down to one. Not yet. Second charge timeout. <laughs> a That's timeout call. This will be a 30-second timeout. Yeah. So a timeout for Sean Clark and company. And it, thinking things through from Georgia State's perspective, it, needless to say, they need a touchdown if they retain yeah. possession without App State scoring. So as much time as possible is ideal. You have the kicker in Ruiz who could, you know, in different circumstances, get a longer field goal attempt to matter for you, but that's not going to be the case. Or if you could get, you know, I mean, these are obviously hypotheticals, but we've seen this happen in football games. You get a stop, you get the ball back under a minute, under 15, you score very quickly. It's a team that can score fast, and then maybe you, you know, you score, either you get the field goal in, and then try to get the onside kick. We know the onside kick success rate hasn't been that great the last couple of years. But I mean, there, there are some scenarios, but the most important thing I think you know, for, for Georgia State is that they have to get stops and then their offense has got to be ready to hit the field, hit the field running. One foot in front of the other in either case. If you're App State, you need to get this first down. If you're Georgia State, you need to prevent it from happening. Power set. Huseman, another give. Up the middle, will it be enough? It. it looks close to the marker. Right around a one yard gain for Peoples who has been a workhorse in this second half. Got it. And a first down for the Mountaineers. Got it by about a nose of the football. They extend the drive, no measurement needed. And it'll be first and 10. Now the Mountaineers will use every drop of the clock. <laughs> And, and it's a very difficult feeling because Georgia State defensively, you know, you held an Appalachian State team to, to 17 points. And, and you know, this is a team that, that has been noted to play big and do things in big moments. And you play them play for play. It may not be enough. Funny thing about it is the Mountaineers are right on their defensive average pretty much, 17 points. What they give up, they give up 13. The fake to Peoples this time. Smart play by Peoples. Miller Gibbs. Miller's, I'm sorry, Gibbs. Smart play. They, they they throw the pass. Safe pass. But instead of trying to, you know, get extra yards or either try to go out of bounds, picks up about seven, goes down, clock continues to run. And how about the play call? Again, it looked like it, it was, was going to be another, I, yeah, I, another yeah, give I, yeah, to Peoples yeah. up the middle. Wow, how much confidence will this give Huseman going into next week that things didn't look good for Thomas? I'm just saying what we saw, I don't, don't know anything. Sure, but if in fact but it is Huseman's game. He, he's got to go in, and that, that should seal it. That first down should seal it. Peoples again through traffic, getting the first down. And you mentioned... That Coastal Carolina matchup, a ranked Chanticleers team. App State, much like this matchup, 6-0 and versus the Chanticleers. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going I'm to be, be coach. I'm going to be the Grinch of football right now. Go ahead. Don't worry about Coastal Carolina right now. Don't <laughs> don't worry about it. You know, they're, they'll be there. Saturday will be here soon enough. Enjoy this win because there are things that you're going to have to work on because if Coastal plays at their norm and you play like you play, getting them might not be the best thing that could have ever happened to you. I'm just, I'm just kind of keeping it real. You know, that's how it is. This is a great win for Appalachian State and a very tough loss for Georgia State because the defense dominated today. I'm very impressed with them. And the Panthers, to boot, dominated the first you. half. It yes. was looking really good for Georgia State, but App State somehow – Scrapes and claws their way to a victory, 17 to 13 but, as the clock hits zero. But you know the great thing about it? <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but you got a W. And you see the two longtime friends, the coaches get together. And, uh, hey, now you can enjoy it. Say, now you want to talk about um, Coastal? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see Sean Clark of App State and Sean Elliott of Georgia State, as you mentioned, 
embracing at midfield. Former teammates, they've both coached on staffs here at App State. And then, again, the matchup. I know you don't want to talk about it, Stan. Oh, you can now. <laughs> I mean, no, you can't. I mean, really. I mean, you can now because there it is. And it's going to be on national TV, 12 o'clock. And, um, you know, I'm either trying to get a credential to go or either I'll, you know, my cable bill is paid, so I'll be able to watch the game. But, yeah, it's a great Coastal Carolina's had a heck of a season. It's been a, 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 a marquee year for the Chanticleers, who are undefeated, ranked, and they keep that undefeated mark as they did not play today. And it's, it's the type of game you should be excited about. But right now, you know, our thoughts go out to, to Act Thomas, and congratulations to Appalachian State and a very, very difficult loss. So for Stan Luter, I'm Darren Vaught saying so long from Boone, North Carolina at Kid Brewer Stadium, where the final score is App State 17, Georgia State 13. To watch the entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.